Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wild, and Jesse Blake. What's that? It's SCPN Pick'em at danglepicks.com. You can get yourself uh, a Mitch Marner signed jersey and their second and third place prizes too because we believe in loser points. Ha ha! Uh. Yeah, I don't think we explain clearly enough because we're not very good at explaining things mm. um, that it's for every game. Yes. Yes. This every thing, game. We just have this thing open where you can go, you can make a little, you answer our questions. Yeah. And if you are at the top of the leaderboard, you win a Mitch Marner jersey. It's That's game right. One. Game two, game two, game three, mm-hmm. game three, game four. Yep, still and cold. Game five, and we'll see. Still what? Cold. Yeah. Cheeseburger. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> no, that's be, with, that's be for dangle picks. <laughs> no, you can bet on whether or not there's a cheeseburger. <laughs> anyway, there's big prizes to be won. Check it out, danglepicks.com. Uh, Steve and Jesse and I got absolutely slammed in the first game, but if you bet hard on Tampa, you won. Crazy. Game two, though. I want to see the results. I don't know what my points are yet, but I'm pretty excited about it. I, I haven't like, looked either. I feel like I, most things. Now, I'm pretty sure I won. I have something. I have mm-hmm. a present for both of you to start the game today. Mm-hmm. Oh. But you're not allowed to look at it just yet. So pass that down to Jesse, please. Is it a beer? Pass it down to Jesse. I don't know what it is. We're going to do a... Don't look at it yet. Don't you fucking look at it. Is it a beer? Don't you Yeah, I think it's look a... It. Uh, I'm not drinking beer at the fucking. I mean, it's not 10 big enough to be a quart of gentlemen, really bad beer gentlemen at noon on Friday. Gentlemen, it's Friday. I would like to raise a toast <laughs> to the one and only. You ready? Is the camera on me? Is the camera on me? Get it on. It Come on, ready? To the one and only John Tavares, a kombucha <laughs> toast. <laughs> oh, this to is the, this is like man his. Who got the hat trick? John Tavares. Love that. We're going to drink a little local. This Love is greenhouse uh, kombucha. This uh, isn't his kombucha. This is not his cake of kombucha, but you know Johnny does it. So I just want to do a little cheers. Come on, Jesse. Adam, did they only Come have on. two red ones? Yeah, they had two red ones and one purple. That was all they had. Yeah. So here we go. I'm afraid, I'm afraid it's going to fizz. You yeah. know what? I get it. It won't fizz. It's actually really good. Yeah, I get it. It's good. Oh, Jonathan, I get it. And Nice fermented beverage. I'll never... Is it? Yes, it is fermented. Like is it, I don't know why they... Does that it. mean it's boozy? I, no, no, no booze. No booze. No booze. Wow. Yeah, it's good though, right? Uber home. No, no, don't worry. It's you Friday. don't have to worry. I wouldn't get... It's Friday, the least one. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not just, I'm, just, I'm not just feeding you alcohol. Friday! Day. No, <laughs> so I'm going to pick up my son from d- fucking daycare. <laughs> Leo! Get the fuck over here! Oh my, oh, that guy a- wants a kiss. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's <laughs> Anyway, um, listen, I, I, Jesse, I sent you a text uh, just a second ago. Steve got a little bit of a shout out midway through the first period before the game had gotten away on Tampa. And I want you to put this up on screen if you can. I did? Uh, th- that's it right there. It is uh, oh. Tony X, known best for, uh, for being a St. Louis Blues super fan. Uh, and the graphic is Maple Leafs playoff droughts. 19 years without a series win. The last one was 2004 versus the Senators. 54 straight seasons without a Stanley Cup final appearance. Last championship, 67. And Tony says, yeah, I understand why Steve Dang will be going off now. It do be like that. It, it is. Now, it last, is certainly like that. Last night, the Leafs went off. And, and, and you know, I, I ended the segment on Tuesday with this quote from Ryan O'Reilly. Because this was the one thing that gave me hope. Women be shopping. Yeah, that, is <laughs> not, that, that was not what Ryan O'Reilly said. No, he said, I love Osmo's Burritos, <laughs> which is he's now an endorsement guy. Burritos? Yeah, the Osmo's. Like, that is not what yeah, Osmo well, says. Yeah, bur- Osmo's has burritos. Shawarma. There's shawarma. <laughs> shawarma. Adam, how dare you? All right, you have a sip of your kombucha. I will. And be wrong. Anyway, you uh, Ryan O'Reilly, hiccups right Ryan back, O'Reilly said this. I did get the hiccups before the show. I don't have them anymore, I don't believe. Uh, he said he was not worried that the Leafs just needed to adjust and move on to the next game. And Zach Aston Reese, and this is from um, Lance Hornby from the Toronto Sun, said, you get so hyped up that you shit the bed. That's the way I felt after game one anyway. Yeah. And, and Shitting the bed. <laughs> uh, and to start things off. Just shitting it. Well, he said crap the bed. I said shit the bed. Oh, um <laughs> But he meant shit. Matthews, Marner, Yarn, Croak started the game. Ah! Started the game, everybody. Ah! Woo! Unbelievable. 
The shell dog. What a crazy idea. I know. And they drew a penalty that led to a power play goal in the first minute. Isn't that wild? Yeah, it's very weird how that uh, works. Unreal. So, yeah, Ian Cole gets that penalty in the first 40 seconds. He tripped Mitch Marner uh, after a Mitch Marner interception. Uh, Marner scores literally three seconds after. It's the best. It's a good shot. He's developed a really good shot. Good screen. Leafs, you know, it's funny. We talked about how um, the Leafs were trying to get shots through traffic on Vasilevsky in game one, and it super wasn't working. And perhaps they should abandon that plan. And the Leafs said, actually, how about we just do it better? Uh, and then they did. Right. They did it much better now without big bodies like Cernak and um, Hedman in there. It certainly makes it a little bit easier. But, you know, the cruel thing, and I said this during the stream, is they don't stop the games. No, they don't. Do you remember in 2021 when they were like, Tavares is hurt. We're going to put this on hold for a couple months and then see where we go. That's not what happens. It's just they don't stop the games. Game three is tomorrow. Game four is Monday, et cetera, et cetera. You have to make do. Yeah. And I don't then, even know what's wrong with Hedman. Like, I, well, when I hope he went down the tunnel, I was surprised. I hope the Lightning medical staff do. I uh, certainly They said it they was do. undisclosed. So. Wow, well, it's the playoffs. Yeah. Could be anything. He must have been heading into the playoffs or something, but they said it's new. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing about coaches during the playoffs. They're big, dirty liars. (laughs) Oh, yeah. CJ was talking about it because he saw him skating in pregame skate, like the practice and whatever. And CJ said that he didn't look like Hedman. He didn't look like he was going to play. And then, yeah, he was out. Interesting. Interesting. Um, Giordano and uh, Bogosian fight about five minutes in. Now, what was interesting about this is it was supposed to be Belmare and yeah. Giordano, but the linesman stepped in. So Bogosian's like, fuck it, I'll fight him. Which he did not have to. But also, if you're Giordano, you're like, this is a bit of a difference. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. extremely. Like Belmare, I'm like, okay. Bogosian, I'm like, uh, maybe I should run. Because he's it, huge. It happened very fast. And I think you can see my face on the stream when I realize who's going. I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't like that at all. Like, Bogosian Shen, maybe. But I got to say, as far as tilts go, uh, Giordano got some really good fights in and then mm-hmm. and then pulled him down. Like, it wasn't... Yeah. I think you give the edge to zero on that Do you one. see what the, the ref gave him, like, four pats on the butt to get him up? Or yeah, he, like, to, spanked Bogosian? Yeah, like, <laughs> like six times? It was just, just whacking him? Just. You that, that viral video of that dude betting on the horses and he's smacking himself on the ass for the horses to go? <laughs> What, oh, like I Kramer not. from Seinfeld? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, he's doing he's doing the Kramer from Seinfeld. He's trying to get. Oh dude, that's what God. that felt like. Like, why is the ref beating his butt so much? I, I I don't know if that's the hockey thing. Like, all right, good fight. Now fuck off. All right. Like, I don't, I don't know what the hell that was. It's just refs in the NHL. They there's a weird line that they 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 dance upon. Dude, we saw Pierre Maguire <laughs> touch. Or tap uh, Brad Marchand on the ass in, in the playoffs versus Boston. We were there. You it's a little there. different when one has an effect on the game. That's like true. Pierre Maguire is not affecting yeah. the, the results of a hockey game. Mm-hmm. Sports Just has a fan experience. An inordinate yeah. amount of butt touching. There's a lot of butt touching. Yeah. yeah. I guess. It's Love. not like Adam and I are, you know, we're discussing what we're going to talk about on the okay, show. Okay, good. And I'm just holding on to his butt and he's <laughs> Give holding me a good on to my butt and we're just tapping each other's I mean, butt. we could. We could if you want it. Like, I'm I can cool tap with your it. butt from the other room. Yeah. This, this guy's got a fucking dunk. That's why you call it a power dumper, is what you call it. So, oh, no. Um, but uh, uh, Nyes, oh, yeah. Matt Nyes takes a penalty. This is all before five minutes, by the way. And this is where the game could have evened up and we could have had a completely different hockey game last night. Mm. If Samsonov does not make the saves that he makes on that penalty kill, um, I mean, it was kind of a weak, it was not the best call for Nyes, but it was also like playoff wise, it's like on the line of playoff calls. You could see why the refs made the call. It was on the hands, whatever. Uh, But Sammy with some big saves there. Big, big saves. Um, I know he's fighting something and I could not tell you what it is, but it's funny. Sometimes he goes into the splits and he winces and you think the world's over. And other times he goes into it like Gumby. And he's just totally fine. Yeah. Um, the Nyes penalty was unfortunate. The Jake McKay penalty well, on Perry was real stupid. What I'm going to get into. So so the next one is super. Corey Perry snows uh, Samsonov. And of course he does. As he's he Corey will. Perry. Like as you know, if Corey Perry was playing for you, I would I'm paying Corey Perry to snow other goalies. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. But McKay pushes him once and then pushes him again. And when he does it, well, it's hand up in the face. Hand right? up in the face. And Perry sells it. And he's good at that. But Indignantly. 
I don't. How dare did in the National Hockey League? Like yeah. I haven't done this four thousand times in my career. To me, when I watch the Boston Bruins play in the playoffs, I see them do that all the time. All the time. They never get called. McCabe got called on that. That's well, why I had a problem with it. I officiating wise, I was like, guys. There's just but a different. Is, we know it's different. Why are we calling that? I mean, when we get, we'll, we'll I can't wait to talk about the Bruins Panthers series because, yeah, uh, leave it to Radko Gudas to make me feel bad for Brad Marchand. <laughs> like, <laughs> holy no kidding. shit. No kidding. Um, and of course, uh, so here's the thing: the Leafs kill that penalty. Tavares. Uh, with a big second goal. So Lightning had two power plays in a row. The Leafs at this point are getting shot eight to three. And you get and you see Morgan Riley driving in. I believe this is going to be his second assist. But what he does is when he drives the outside and when he's moving, he's very, very good at this, opens up the Lightning defense and is able to drive deep enough that he can pass to Tavares, who is open because there's people moving around. And Tavares scores were from you know, Tavares usually scores was about ten feet in front of the net. Just right there. Dude, I as soon as it was announced last game, and we knew Kerfoot was going to be on that second line with Tavares and Nylander, I said, fuck, like at the top of my lungs. <laughs> because, dude, I hate that line. I hate it. And they were the best line on the ice. They were. And Stamkos then takes a high stick, or has a high stick on McCabe. Uh, and by the way, I believe, uh, yeah, that's the one where Willie scored on the delayed penalty. It was a double minor. But it was a double minor, yeah. so we got two more minutes after that. I was very confused on the broadcast. I'm like, well, why is Stamkos in the box also? That, but that is a, um, that Willie goal, that Sorry. was a big, great goal. That was a big goal. Cause it's two, nothing as a Leaf fan is nothing. You're like, oh, okay, well we might as well be tied. Um, Dude, even three, three, even nothing, three. <laughs> three, nothing. You start to go, okay, we, we really might like, if we play smart, we could win this. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the, you have to understand the mentality of Leaf fans in the playoffs. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, we need, I need it to be seven, two before I'm comfortable. If you're if you have a, if you're not a Leafs fan and you have a friend who's a Leafs fan and you're perplexed by the way they behave, have you ever adopted a dog? This is exactly what it's like. Yeah, listen, I don't know who put you through what, but I'm sorry and I'm here to give you a better life. That's that's how you <laughs> that's how yeah. I treated Charlie and that is how you have to treat Leaf fans because we are we have baggage, man. Yep, we have baggage. Yep, but yep. really deep down we're good boys. We are. And girls. Yeah. We're good boys and girls. Um, there was a two-minute penalty, obviously, after the Stamkos goal, or Stamkos high stick and Willie goal, but n no chances. And here's the big thing out of the first period, guys. The Leafs get a standing ovation when the period ends. Mm -hmm. Last it's, game. We're not complicated. It ended with booze. We're not complicated. Win and you will be worshipped. 3 it's nothing at the win. end of the first. Simply win. So let me ask you this, guys. You're... you're you're sitting, uh, you're sitting on the stream. Jesse and I are at home. What are you thinking during the intermission? It's 3 nothing. What do you think? Why isn't Adam in his box seats? Oh, well, that's true. It's a good point. It's a good point. He gave it to a guy in a yellow shirt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got to talk about it. He gave it to a yellow shirt guy. What are you thinking in between those periods when the Leafs were up 3 Uh, Fuck yeah. I'm, I'm thinking this is amazing. There's I'm no thinking. anxiety crossing your mind? No. No, no, it's it's how I've it should live that way. It how it's how it should have been with all their defensemen that are injured and Tampa coming into the playoffs. Like that's how we thought. Not not this much of a big lead and this domination like they had in game two, but we thought they'd take care of business here, and I'm glad that they did. The Leafs should have been favored with a healthy Tampa lineup. Yeah, and it didn't go that way in game one. Why well, they didn't have a healthy lineup in game one, man? They finished the game with four D. Mm -hmm. Um, and now if, that even more players are out, like there was no excuse to lose that. If anything, they were in a better position defensively in game two than they were in game one, because <laughs> at least they had six guys. They who were playing. Could play. Um, uh, I mean, there's no question that the front of their net was easier to take last mm -hmm. night, but like Vasily, Vasily got beat clean a few times. Marner, that puck doesn't touch a thing. Yep. Uh, Willie, that puck doesn't touch a thing. Nope. Sometimes we forget to give credit to the guys who make the plays, and mm -hmm. we, we always fault the person who let in the mistake, and sometimes it's just a great shot. Like I don't think I don't think William Nylander knows that the playoffs started because he's so unaffected from like his regular season play to the playoffs. He always just shows up and plays the consistent game, and like that shot's just unreal. I don't know who's who's stopping that. Confident shot. Yeah. Real confident shot. And... 
those shots are not there. They're not available for Austin Matthews. And he got two assists. Mm -hmm. Riley, man, ah, man, he takes a lot of criticism and a lot of it's deserved. His dominant games are unreal. When Riley's on, he's really on. A primary assist on all four of the Leafs' first goals. Yeah. Come on. So That's a great player. It's, it is. So Achari kicks off the second period uh, with that um, that really nice move uh, against the uh, defenseman on the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, who I forget who it is. Um, Herbix. Yeah, and, and, you know, Vasilevsky stands tall on that one. Nice has a couple of moments in tight where it kind of looks like he's going to get it. The Leafs are playing really good pressure, lots of good cycles, good team defense. And then, and it's funny, after like a two-minute cycle in the Tampa zone, Justin Hall drives deep, and he had done this earlier in the game too, drives deep down the right side of the ice in the offensive zone, and then just holds it too long. And and Tampa, the Tampa player bumps them off the uh, off the puck. They get um, uh, they get possession of it. They bring it back down, and Tampa scores. And and that Justin Hall. And I don't want to dump on the guy because I think he's actually played really great. But in the offensive zone, I'm seeing I'm seeing this a lot where he drives and then dead zones it. It's just sort of like nothing happens. I. I don't know what that is with him because that was his game in the minors, and we've talked about this before. I think he needs to do things like that to be effective. But he's got to make a choice in the ozone sooner. He does, but also his teammates got to know to support him. Oh, that's and fair. I think what happens there is Ian Cole sends Ryan O'Reilly ass over tea kettle, and what I didn't see because it was along the boards is was it a slew foot? Or not, because the bench sure seemed to think it was something to that effect. Yeah, I could see how it might be with the players involved. Well, you never know. But, uh, yeah, they got one back, and i that's when I got nervous. Because it wasn't just Tampa on the board. They kept the pressure on after that. So, I, I didn't like what Gio was doing on that play. I'm pretty sure he was the other defenseman who was, was in the corner. Justin Hall, at the end of the play, when Ian Cole scores, Justin Hall just left out alone all in front trying to cover two guys at once. Yeah. Like, there was no support for him at all. Gio's struggled, man. Yeah, a little bit. Struggled. Yeah. After being, like, the most consistent defender after TJ Brody, I would put Gio up there. And he lately... He back half. Yeah, the last, like couple weeks of the season now these first two games he hasn't looked that great at this point it's three to one and riley has three primary assists and this is where his first secondary assist comes in because he oh they change it well no because he had three primary and then he had a fourth assist which was the secondary oh i thought it was primary so he gets it it over wrong on the website gets it over to willie Gets it over to Willie. Willie seems to put it off Asileski's pads on purpose, and then Tavares gets a second goal. Now, do you guys think that that was Willie go? Because Willie's a cheeky hockey player. Do you think he was throwing it off the pads? I mean, it's never the wrong move to put it on net, right? Maybe you get lucky and it hits something and it bounces in. But, I mean, when you're driving the net and you know you have Johnny Hockey with you, why the hell wouldn't you? Johnny yeah. Toronto, sorry. Johnny Tor- Did you know Johnny- Matt? Do you guys know Matt Nyes is living with him? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that till last night. Yeah, he's he's had a little bit of this. He's had a little bit of the kombucha. A little bit of kombucha and kale. The K and K. A little bit. Okay. Now is this the Oh, it is with a K. The Morgan Riley, I was just double checking to make sure I read it right, but the Morgan Riley four assist night was tied for the most points in a playoff game by a Leafs defenseman. That doesn't oh, surprise dude, me. Dude, it's they've been so <laughs> Pathetic. futile. Pathetic. Pathetic. So tied for the most playoff po- or points in a playoff game by a Leaf defenseman. No. Tavares' hat, <clears throat> hat trick was the first hat trick any Leaf has had in the playoffs since Alexander McGillney in 2003. Can you name the last time it happened at home? Because I got that for you. Oh, I know Mike Gardner was on the list. I don't know if it was him. It was 1996 with Mike Gardner. It was Mike Gardner. 1996! It's a home hat trick. That's how bad. That's how bad. Oh my it's pathetic. God. It's like, uh, like you don't understand if you're not a Leaf fan. You don't get it. The Morgan me. Riley isn't even four defensemen, so it's it says Morgan Riley tied the Maple Leafs playoff record for most assists in a game, just out of anybody. Just generally, no, no other Maple Leafs, no Maple Leafs player has ever had five assists in a game in a playoff game. Now, granted, that's hard, but that's in 106 hard. years. I would have thought somebody five assists in a hundred years uh, playoff game. So <laughs> come on. June 1996, I don't know why my brain thinks this way, is when Disney released The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Okay. <laughs> I was eight. Long we were ago. eight years old. We were eight years old. That's how long 
long ago it was. Uh, those Z- Leafs TikToks where they ask them, "Hey, what's the, what's the VHS?" Oh. and they don't know. I don't know if you guys saw those. Those are yeah, funny. Turned to dust. So now it's four to one. Oh, and I'm thrilled that the fact that Twitter didn't say that too much about the four to one because they didn't really have time to. Zach Aston Reese scored in tight like Zach Aston Reese does. And you guys have been saying, well, we want playoff Zach Aston Reese. That's why you bring him in. It was a good grinder goal. And that from the whole line. Yes, the Conf, Lafferty, Lafferty Zach great. Aston Reese mm-hmm. line did look a bit shaky on their first shift, but they're now kind of starting to look better. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Then the Marner goal follows that almost immediately. Spin around and shoot. Hagel redirects it. I love that pass from Brody. Well, yeah, where he just where it comes skirts Cheeky. along the boards and he just Cheeky. Nice. Hard to follow. Um, and so at the end of the second period, it is now six to one. And the question becomes do you put Vasilevsky, if you're Tampa, do you put Vasilevsky back in? Um and or uh do you have a choice because Vasilevsky's going in and he's told you that? Do you did you see what John Cooper said? What did he say? He said, I asked him, and he quickly mm-hmm. said no. It wasn't a choice. Like, he made the decision for the team. He said, I'm standing there. Yeah. Now, he has a record, right? He does he's have He's never been pulled? Yeah. He's he's played every single minute of the entire Tampa run, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so, so, like, he's, he's not, just sitting there. He's so not ridiculous. doing that. Yeah. He's not, he's not coming out of the game. My uh, Curtis McElhaney, like, you're doing great! Natalie, Natalie was like, Brian uh, uh, they did a shot of Brian Elliott on the bench, and she's like, is that guy a hockey player? And I said, yeah. And she's like, but he's like a coach. She and I'm like, no, he's just a hockey player. She's like, he looks, he looks old. <laughs> it's the gray. I said, I said to be a hockey player, yes, but he's he's a spectacular backup. He's man, he's spectacular. He was the goalie. He was the goalie for the Ottawa Senators. Um, the night Boyd Devereaux got a hat trick in his last ever NHL game that affected the Leafs draft pick. Going from the fifth overall pick to the seventh. Oh. So he was in net for the Sens, uh, and that pick resulted in the Leafs getting Kadri instead of Braden Shen. Wow. Yeah. So he was the, he was the starting goalie that night in, I guess that would have been spring 2009. And here he is still. It's amazing. He's on a roster, man. It's amazing. No, it's amazing what he's done. I'm not trying to take away from it at all. Like, it's just, champion. it's really rare. Uh, third period. I, can I read the uh, Vasily stat? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hit us. Um, during the broadcast, it was shown that Vasilevsky had played in every minute of every postseason game since 2018, which spanned 82 games. He is two away from tying Martin Brodeur's record of 84 games between 95 and 2003. So two games away from this all-time record. You're probably sticking in for the seven goal game. Almost any other coach in the league does that. Um, they're getting heavily criticized because you're jeopardizing your goalie and he could get hurt. But Vasilevsky is just weirdly, bizarrely, scientifically durable. Okay. I th- What I said in the video yesterday is there's only two goalies in the league like him. And I think it's him and Vas... Uh, pff, idiot. I think it's him <laughs> and Hellebuck. And Peter Morazic. Y- definitely. Yeah, yeah. No, Three, like, goals. Three goals. Who, who else plays 60 games and stays healthy the whole time? There's goalies who think they can. Mm-hmm. As, you know, let me be bitter about Frederick Anderson's time in Toronto again. He thought he could do it. He couldn't. His body broke down. Uh, Hellebuck stayed in that game last night after uh, getting cut open, puts a band-aid over his face, stays in the game. Uh, and Vasilevsky, like, I can't even remember the last time I heard he was day to day. Like, he's just a bizarrely durable goaltender, and you don't even think for a moment, oh, I bet he's tired. <laughs> it's now, just not a consideration. Going into the third, the Leafs had an opportunity to tie the most goals Vasilevsky's ever allowed in his career in a game, and that's in season or playoffs. Yeah, and that Regular- was set. Last series game <laughs> Colorado. to Colorado finals last year when they had him down seven nothing. I streamed that game. That was bizarre. That um, was incredibly bizarre. So uh, uh, first off, Janot and uh, Shen finally get into it because Janot and they're they're arguing off the face off. Shen's not going for it. Why would he? And then all of a sudden, it's like okay, they're gonna fight. That like it's, it's just gonna happen. Uh, I was really worried. I didn't like that fight for Shen and Janot had those fast fists going. And then Shen gets that left loose. Yeah. I didn't know he could box that. He's a lefty, is he not? Is he? Uh, apparently. Like it, is, it is like day-to-day handedness. I'm pretty I, sure he's a lefty. I don't know. Yeah. He's he's at very least. Uh, yeah, I know he can throw his left. Put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we know <clear>. that. <laughs> that was clear. Woo. 
And it's it's funny because Justin Hall fighting Perry and you know Justin Hall's willingness to fight and being bad at it is something I can respect. But it's also how I remembered Luke Shen as a Leaf. Like, yeah, he was willing to fight. He was not good at it. <laughs> he was, and obviously he you know put on some man miles, I guess. Um, over his journey through the desert, through the NHL, and getting the, going to the AHL and winning a cup in the bubble and winning another one. Um, at some point along the way, he learned to fight, and he uh, uh, they got some good shots in on each other. I would call that a draw. Is that a is that a fair draw? Maybe I'd call he it maybe a draw. tilted towards Geno, Geno but uh, ultimate loser Geno's hand. Holy. Yeah. Now, as <laughs> Jeanneau goes to the box, Lee fans are rowdy as hell at this point, and everybody knows him by now, the guy in the yellow sweater, oh, yeah. and Jeanneau get into it. Now, what happened, what we saw on t- TV was just people beaking at each other, but what actually apparently happened was the guy in the yellow sweater, sweater tried to climb into the box. There's yeah. conflicting... And they, they kicked him out of the game. The, conf- the report is he tried to climb into the box, and I look at the physique of this guy. The, the security kicked this guy out, and, and I looked at him, and... and there's no way he's getting into the box. He's he, like he's he's a big man, but there's no way that guy in jeans is getting his leg over and getting into the box. So he's that, not so like that posing yellow a yellow triangle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I have a buddy who was sitting like six seats away from yellow oh, triangle. No way. And he was wow, telling you have another us, rich buddy. And he was telling yeah, another billionaire in my life. And he was telling us everything that happened. Uh, what did he say? So, yeah. so I have the story. How, how Tell us. So I have I have the story. So uh, he's chirp. Uh, no, okay. So yellow shirt guy stands on his seat and leans on the glass. And Mar- <laughs> maroon um, maroon cocked his stick in the box, and then Perry holds him back. So, so that matches Rachel Dory's report. Yeah. So that that thing about hey he tried to get out and that happened a hundred percent. So he goes wow. and Perry. So, so hold to, on, explain it to me because I have not heard this. So what yellow this? shirt guy's going crazy at him. He's chirping, he's chirping, and eventually he stands up on a seat and gets right up on the glass, looking like he's going to try and climb over. And then Maroon takes his stick and is gonna go like butt him with it on the on the other side. And Perry's like, no, 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 don't do that. You're gonna. But how you're is gonna be, Corey, the you're gonna lose that. your job. How does that? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Amazing. So, okay. so they, uh, so Maroon, who's he was, uh, according to my buddy, who was right there, was like beat red and was like really affected by all the chirping. Like they got under his skin. That, wasn't it Janot though that was in the box? No, it's all three. Is, is Patty, there's everybody, oh, who's everybody who's stuffed in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Maroon. So they really like, got Maroon. Yeah. So fans, like, if you ever think it works, it does. Hundred <laughs> percent. Like Maroon was heated, and, but security, as soon as that guy um, started to cl- get on on his seat and going at uh, Patty Maroon, he's done. He was he was out in like five seconds. He was like he didn't even know where security came from. You they, can't do that. They fucking got him out of yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You can't. So. You can't do that. You can't. Yeah. So, but, but apparently all night, um, the least fans in that little corner by the box we're going at the Tampa player good keep going I mean <laughs> that's your job <laughs> be the fans I mean you can't climb your seat right. and like hold on to the glass but like say whatever you want what, what I said in the LFR is if you wonder if the players can hear you or not behind the glass they can uh I was there game three 2018 uh I had those between the bench seats and uh there's a neutral zone face off right in front of the Bruins bench there, there's probably footage of it and um, Marner trips, or sorry, Marshan trips Marner off the faceoff. And they delay the faceoff. And I go, Tapical! So loud that a solid <laughs> quarter of the Bruins bench turned around and looked at me. And I bet they were very happy to see you. Well, you I, especially. For a very brief moment, I was like, mm, mm, <laughs> There's his mighty shit. might roar. Yeah. I didn't think you could hear all that. Um, <laughs> Steve, you also got to like see these guys at media day. What are you doing? Fuck it. He's being Steve. Steve. <laughs> he's fucking being Steve. That's what he's doing. Go Leafs go. I'm not seeing Danton Heinen at Media Day. <laughs> go Leafs go. Yeah, never Only know. Nesson sees him at Media Day. Uh, Nyes at this point, by the way, is pushing like 13, 14 minutes on the ice. And I, I was thinking this. And and I, I don't know if they... They didn't make a lot of it on the broadcast because the line didn't get a goal. But do you want to play O'Reilly, Achari? You want to play against O'Reilly, Achari, and Nyes all series? Dude, that's a tough third line. That's a tough. They're big and they're mean and they, but they're not stupid. What worried me about that line is I didn't like Kerfoot on the second line, Mm -hmm. but I worried about playing Nyes up there. That's a lot of responsibility. But I think it goes without saying if the second line works, 
it all works. The whole system works. And it was... It was working. Really difficult to beat. The first line played as the first line is expected to play. No surprises there. The second line was probably their best line on the ice. Achari on the right of O'Reilly with whoever you put on the left, I think is miserable. It's a miserable time. But Nyes is a big boy. He's big. If if he can cut down on the penalties, that was a slash and whatever. It it wasn't crazy. He's he's gotten two penalties in the NHL. Well, and there was the stupid slash at the very end of the game, whatever. Um, He's a good stick lifting thief. Um, But those are also he's really good. He's got when he's got the puck and someone tries to knock him off. He keeps contact. But it's something that, yes, and something that uh, I loved watching, I was just like, oh, my God, how lucky is this fucking guy? He's sitting there on the bench as Achari is talking over him to O'Reilly. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you you couldn't be a luckier rookie in this league than having those two. Like, the education, the crash course he is getting right now in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Oh. I can't wait to see this guy full time. One thing that I got to remember for next year is that that in between period where Keith's just trying shit, he's going to go back to the thing that we kind of all saw at the beginning. So when they got Ryan O'Reilly, the dream was you run your big three centermen. And then there's the fucking two weeks and the next month where they're like, okay, Ryan O'Reilly's the centerman and Tavares is his winger. And then when push came to shove, they just did the thing. And we're all here, and it worked beautifully. Just, it, I guess you don't want to show your hand for the last two months of the regular season. Also, Ryan O'Reilly wasn't in the lineup, so we didn't know there if, was he, that too. He, if he would have actually done this. But like when it, we get to these moments, he's just going to go to the thing that's probably the most obvious and always works. I don't yeah. think you can counter Nick Paul with a dude who's not even a full-time center. Right? You need Ryan O'Reilly, though. Yeah, you do. You do. Uh, Corey Perry then scores uh, again. I believe it's the second of the uh, series. He scores the second goal for for Tampa. Uh, He's got two and two games. Then he gets into a fight with Justin Hall. Yeah, he always picks his tough targets. And what was interesting about that is Corey Perry scoring and then getting into a fight led directly to John Tavares' hat trick and to Corey Perry getting kicked out because... He gets the gets in the fight with Hall. Then he gets the penalty. Then Nick Paul gets the puck over glass penalty. So oh, Tavares oh. scores his hat trick. Yeah, shout, shout out to Tavares. Tavares is what? Whee! His hat trick! Um, uh, you, you, you skipped over a, a little part there. What's that? Patrick Maroon should be getting fucking fine today. That that cross check to the back of uh, Giordano's head, right, right was along pretty the pretty bad. That was chicken shit. Yeah. I but, don't know if he, he shouldn't. He probably is not going to. I don't think it was enough to get a suspension. He should be at least getting a fine. Find him two, was, or th- two to three hundred dollars. Whatever, man. Like, uh, put something on his record. That's chicken shit. And like, this is a guy. You know, it is worth mentioning because we've seen over and over and over again in series that have nothing to do with the Leafs, players will do what you let them get away with. Mm. Maroon should have been kicked the fuck out of Game Six of the Stanley Cup Final last year. Tell us why, because not everybody remembers it like you do. Because he lost his mind on the officials. I can't remember exactly what he did, but in any other game, he's he's he at very least gets a penalty, probably gets a game misconduct, and maybe even gets a call from the league. But because it was a, I think it was a controversial call. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. It was a goal to put the Avs up. I want to say 2-1. He lost his mind. Stamkos lost his mind. I, I think someone shot a puck at the officials or something. And it, he, sh- he should have been kicked out of the fucking game. He does get red. He gets red. He gets red. And by the way, when, when Pat Maroon's angry, he turns the color red. Yeah. Like last night. And now we could talk a little bit more about him because when he did actually get booted, he, he was yelling at the refs from the crowd too. You uh, gotta well and like there's so there's game management there, right? Yeah. Like okay, we gotta get Corey Perry out of here to calm things well, down. Well, hang on though. This is why I wanted to bring this up with okay. Corey Perry. Because I don't know if you saw this, Kaylee Sibley caught some pretty incredible facial expressions uh from the crowd. Kay- Kaylee Sibley of Sportsnet. And I what you know how Unreal I was saying that she does. Corey Perry's goal and then fight with Justin Hall led to Corey Perry getting kicked out of the game. I want you to watch John Tavares laughing at Corey Perry and chirping him. Uh, have a look at this. This is from this is all on the center ice cam. So this was not on TV. 
But Tavares is laughing at him from, from the other side of the ice after Tavares scores. And Perry starts to scream at him from across the ice. And this is where Corey Perry loses his absolute mind and gets booted. They'll do what you let them get away with, man. See, this is, and this is the thing. Tavares just smiled at him. To his credit, Perry does calm down. Mm-hmm. I don't know who he was going at it with. It's, it, Tavares, Tavares, Tavares laughing at him. Why is he Look at the beginning. At Look at the beginning. Oh, he's just, what, smirking at him yeah. from the box? Yeah. And then he... Perry loses it. And then he boots, and then they boot him. Then he dunks a hatty on his head. Looks yeah. good on you. Yeah, and that well, that's after the hat trick goal. That's when Tavares oh, was laughing was it? at him. It's still six two. Yeah, six two. Oh, okay, it wasn't. Oh yeah. shit! All right. <laughs> wow. Uh, then awesome. Maroon gets kicked off. Starts yelling at people from the starts yelling at the refs, people from the crowd, whatever. Um, there was also the Ian Cole penalty where he just lost his mind and threw the puck up. <laughs> like I'm so glad the Tampa Bay Lightning employ Ian Cole because uh, he did score. Sure. Two penalties, though, yeah, and fair. and not good ones either. Well, Ta- ill-timed off the first one, which leads to the Marner goal, and then throwing the puck in the air. Like, tell us you're coming apart at the seams without telling He's you. unfortunately playing in a bigger position than he should be because Certainly. of all of the injuries. So I don't fault him for having a couple of mistakes. But. They're a rattle, rattleable, rattleable? They're a yeah. rattleable team. They are, and I didn't know that. Colorado was able to do it to them. They were the first team to do it since 2019 right it's difficult to do usually they're as steady as they come they could have got swept by the rangers last year end up coming back and winning the series thank you andre palat yeah who's not here he's not here and i'm thrilled that the leafs don't have to play against andre palat this year because he's a monster in the playoffs Mm -hmm. except for eastern conference yeah yeah Uh, so uh with all that said um I, I wanted to play John Cooper's press conference afterwards because immediately following the game, John Cooper, and I have this on text for you, Jess, John Cooper and the team have a closed door meeting immediately following the game. I mean, yeah. You didn't send it yet. Oh, I didn't send it? I thought uh-huh. I sent it to the SDPN chat or SDP chat. Um, well, it's not where you usually send it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's there. Uh, so this, uh, I can send it to you right now. So this is interesting because John, I was waiting for John Cooper to say something because he likes to play psychological warfare, right? John Cooper is a damn good quote, and he's always got a way of getting under your skin as a fan of the opposing team. I have a very reluctant respect for him. Even when you went, oh yeah, because he's entertaining. Yeah. His press conferences are usually unhinged, but this one, he seems rattled. Ed, it's, it's a seven game series. It's not a one game, one and done. We'll be all right. How Great does it quote. change when Toronto goes three centers deep and has O'Reilly in the three C spot? That's Luke Fox. How does that change? So how many centers deep are we? Let me ask you that. Well, I'm just saying last game they... they... Give me give me points, Sorelli and Paul, all day against anybody in the league. <clears throat> and then he gets up. And he blinked. He blinked. He that You're right. So- He's so rattled. He is rattled, but what? But he, he'll be back. <laughs> what he's done so well for so long, and especially in last year's series, is he kept saying, uh, "We gave it to them. Mm-hmm. Oh, we made it too easy for them. I'm very stoic and calm, and we gave it to them, and we're going to be fine." And he's good at challenging his own players through the media. Mm-hmm. He knows how to push the right buttons and stuff like that. And he didn't give the Leafs anything in terms of bulletin board material except for then he just did why so tell you me, can look me. at that as a challenge to point sorelli and paul to be better in tampa if i'm matthews Tavares, and o'reilly i am cramming that quote down his fucking throat in game three four and until the till the job is done i'm cramming that shit down your throat you you, you take paul uh, Sorelli and point over us. Okay. Okay. You, over over uh, uh, Con Smythe winner, right? The captain and the reigning heart winner. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Matthews, like, Bet. he's so unflappable and, and you, you rarely see him get mad. I want him fucking mad. I want to, I want John Bot to get mad. 
about that quote. He can't. Not when you're drinking drinks as delicious as kombucha. It's you know what? available at your local convenience store. My mood has improved like tenfold since I started drinking. It's this. quite like good, it's, it's, Jesse. How's the purple? It's all right. What is the purple? This is it's cranberry purple drink. This is uh, what? Do, where's oh? This is the thing. That's not ultraviolet kombucha. Is oh, the name that's of the not a plant. Yeah, so I wasn't sure if that was the name of what my thing is, my flavor. Mine's Ours is cranberry. The word I'm looking for. Yours uh, is cranberry. Cranberry. Mine's ultraviolet. Maybe mm. it is a fruit. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> Yours just, is it's cesarp, Jesse. Yours is sweet, tart, and what? Move your thumb. Crantastic. Mine's tropical, fruity, and quenching. Ooh, they're different, Ooh. They're different stuff. I would say you're quenching, my friend. He is a tall. Just you generally. Water. He has a tall glass of water, isn't he? And an act of probiotics. I'm so ready for game three. No, Ingredients. Great? Filtered so water, lemongrass, cold-pressed pineapple, cold-pressed lemon, cane sugar, butterfly pea flour, That's kombucha culture, vegan probiotic. I think they're That's full of it. shit. But anyway. They're full I, of it. That half of those ingredients flour, are real. You are, need to craft a hat in Red Dead too. What are they full of shit about? I think half of those ingredients are not real, but uh, that's a, <laughs> they don't, they don't actually just exist. They're just making shit up. Yeah, it's just, just making shit up. It's just uh, sugar water. But uh, uh, here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to say. Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning Adam's will a kombucha be kombucha denier. They will be back. The Tampa Bay Lightning will be back. <laughs> Uh, the earth is flat. Kombucha is not real. <laughs> this fizzy drink is flat. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the Tampa Bay Lightning will be back. John Cooper will be back. You might have got under their skin one game, but there's a reason these guys have been to the finals three years in a row. 100%. It's not going to be a long series. It'll be six six games probably. Is that long? That's, That's long. pretty long. Oh, okay. I think longer than I mean, okay. Longer than five is a long longer series. There's five. only yeah. four outcomes. Four, five, six, and seven. Four yeah. or five is short. It's on the, Six, seven it's is on long. the second half of the longs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even, I mean, even to sweep a series, like the Leafs and Lightning would only be halfway there. It's so long. Tampa looks so injured. Like if you took Man. if you took away four defensemen off the Leafs and one forward, oh, like they'd be, be terrible. They, it'd be awful. <laughs> it'd be terrible. And you would look at the team and be like, okay, like it's they can't really compete here. They don't have enough bodies. Should then, they wait then until all the players are healthy so yes. get a, a, a real match? That would be the most fair if everybody was healthy and we played in a bubble like we did in 2020. Colorado. Yesterday, they're down 2 nothing. They don't have Landeskog. They don't have Makar, and they could look at it. Don't go, you dare yeah, summarize well, that game. Don't you dare. Well. Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's, they, a, it's coming up on the docket, sir. They could have said, well, Tanev's making you. fun of us, and yeah. we're sad, and we're hurt. If like, Tampa stays injured, it's going to be real tough for them to compete in the series. Well, and Great. like, I'm thrilled. I'm it's thrilled. Not I hope even, that's the case. It's not even just Hedman uh, being out. If he's in, he's playing hurt. Janelle. Same with Cernak. What's you know, he's 100 playing hurt. Yeah, yeah. If Azemont comes back, he's playing hurt, dude. Uh, Sorelli. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sorelli uh, looked real uncomfortable. I didn't see what happened to him, and that would be a huge blow. Like Adam said, Stamkos was washed four years ago. That's right. So I was, might finally <laughs> soon be right. <laughs> He was a little wrong. <laughs> little wrong. Uh, hey, by the way, I, I by the way, I, I said like. I don't. I don't hope players are injured. I just. I just hope that the Leafs win. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't. What did be, you say? That? I said. Uh, you, you said. Well, it's. It's. It's hard for them to compete because they're so injured. I'm like, good. Oh, and I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. not what I. I, no, I just no. didn't want it to come across that way. I'm not like hoping for people to get hurt. I'm just hoping for the Leafs to win. Why are you a piece of shit? I know. I don't know. Bad guy. Adam uh, Wild. Bad guy. Adam Wild. Now, Justin Fisher actually had, I think, one of the better tweets of the night, and it. It's As always. Criminally under retweeted. Oh, okay. Here, let me pull. He up. said. The day the Leafs realized they could simply play like this all the time. <laughs> and is that not true? They could simply start great all the time. They could simply start Matthews, Marner, uh, Yarncroke every game and not overthink it. They could simply play team defense all game and not overthink it. They played and they did nervous. Great. In game one, they played nervous and they were also coach nervous. They were coach nervous. Yes. No question. And that's what we said last show is like, hey, listen, how do you expect the players to be not nervous if the coach is, you know? Yeah, well, exactly. So right. I, it was great to see they came out, they had a plan, they stuck to it. Now, what do we need to see for game three before we get to Dave? What do you guys want to see? How do you roll into Tampa? Hostile audience. Absolutely stunning area around there. I love the Tiki Bar. Tampa Bay Tiki Bar is amazing outside the arena. It's going to be beautiful weather. 
How do you stay focused? How do you not let, when you're sitting in the penalty box, because you know the Tampa fans are coming for you now, how do you not let them get under your skin? What do you do? How many homes do you have in South Florida? Many. Right next to Rosie O'Donnell, who also lives in Sarasota, 45 minutes outside of Tampa Bay. Why, why do you, know, do you that? know that? Why do you know that? Mick Jagger, who also lives in Sarasota. Why do you, why do you know that? That makes more sense that live there? to know that than Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, did you go to her house? Like, Is, it, is your house no, next actually, door to her? My parents have their retirement residence down there. Um, next to Rosie actually, O'Donnell. No, they don't. No. Canadians with a retirement <laughs> they have residence a, in Florida? They have a very lovely two-bedroom, two-bathroom place uh, <laughs> that is like a, a condo, yeah. um, which they work their whole damn lives for. Rosie O'Donnell's got a $10 million house on the water. Yeah, so in between Sting and Rosie O'Donnell <laughs> right. is your parents. That's right. Me and Sting, we go to yoga together when I'm down there. It's great. And I said hi to his wife, Trudy Styler. That's her name. Yeah, can that's, they know. See? <laughs> that's her wife. That's, that's Sting's wife is named Trudy Styler. Why yeah. do I know that? Why it's do you know that? I don't know. Real. Now that's I know. That's not a real name. That's a real name. Look it up. <laughs> so anyway... <laughs> <laughs> they. Um, I asked you a question and you guys took me off. So, so uh, you can't. I asked you a hockey question. Jesse knows what he did. He knows. Look at him over there, smirking away. <laughs> you what? can't oh. count on the Leafs. Uh, or sorry, well, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <Freudian. laughs> Listen, you, you've said that enough. You can't count on um, getting a break like you did in the first thirty seconds, like you did in game one. Um, you just got to focus on doing the right things, and that's what I said about. Tampa getting back into the game, and that's what helped the Leafs get back into game one before it all fell apart. Do the right things. Mm -hmm. uh, play with the puck. Uh, move your feet. Dump the puck in and attack hard when you have to. Mm. Uh, that'll help you create turnovers. That'll help you draw calls. You'll get power plays out of it. And that's that's going to be a thing. I don't know if you've seen the... the there was a graph that Cam Sharon posted, uh, and it perfectly destroyed the fallacy that there's more penalties in the playoffs. Oh, really? Oh, devastated. I didn't even know that was really a fallacy. Game, well, because there are technically more penalties in the playoffs than the regular season. Okay. But it's like game one, game two, game three, it all skyrockets. Mm -hmm. Game four, there's a drop. Five, there's a drop. Six, there's a drop. Seven, there's practically none. Wow. Wow. Like, think of how many penalties you've ever seen in Game 7 of a Stanley Cup final. It's not a ton. It's true. It's, it's not true. a ton. It's uh, it's very rare. So they just they got to do the right things. they got to continue to apply not just pressure to the front of Tampa's net, but speed. Um, they were trying the standstill um, battles in front of Vasilevsky, and it wasn't working. It's got to be a little bit more flyby, which has sort of been the Leafs' strength all year. Oh, Jesse's got the graphic there up right is. now. Look how pronounced that is. Let me let me read the title. It's relative PP opportunities per playoff game. Am I right, folks? Nice. Am I right? So this is... This is it says game one, two, three, four. Like, I don't know if this is cumulatively of across the league that's my assumption yeah um anyway, this is from 2016 to 2023 this is what cam Sharon writes in the tweet there are a lot of power plays in game one this season more than we'd expect actually with 0 0.8 power plays more than expected based on regular seasons ppo power play opportunities per game here's a chart i'll update every couple of days throughout the playoffs data analysis found in quoted tweet so what we're looking at here is um, in from 2016 to 2013, the power play opportunities. Oh, sorry, 2023. 20, the power play opportunities per playoff game that across the league they average. <coughs> so in games one through four, um, we in this. I guess this would be we're counting. Or this is 2013 or 2023, 22. Is that how we're looking at it? Uh, it's a little confusing. But, yeah. But they don't have a table for what year, year these bars are. All you need but, to know is the difference <laughs> between games one and seven. So what you're saying is through one through four, we see about 0 0.8, 0 0.7 power plays opportunity per team per game. And when you get to games five through seven, it's the complete inverse. So the chart's on uh, the the top of the scale, and then it's on the bottom of the scale where you see about minus 0 0.6 power play as opportunities per team per game. And that's consistent over a number of years, it looks like. It's hockey, 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 prison, prison, prison. <laughs> that, that's how a seven-game series yeah. goes. So referees are kind of refing on a curve where they call everything the first four games and then call nothing the last three games. 
right? So that is how the Tampa series with Toronto went last year. So most yep. series until, go according to until numbers. Until the, the Justin Hall random penalty in game seven. Well, he so there was a pick. There was a Giordano puck over the glass, and Tampa got one, I think. Mm-hmm. It's the rare, man. The really rare. Um, game seven, 2019 in Boston, there were two calls all game. Both were on Boston. I think one was a bench minor, right? So... You, the Leafs' power play has been great. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be able to rely on it. So do the right things. Do things that will draw you calls. Take advantage of the fact that it's game three and four. Because the next time you show up in Toronto, those calls won't be there. Right? And according to the, the graph that Jesse pulled up, like there are some years where it's just fewer penalties than the regular season across the board. Mm-hmm. So they might not even be there in game three and four. So move your feet, do all the right things. And what I was saying at the end of game three, and I, people won't like this. I'm not calling for I dirty. I don't like it. I'm not calling for dirty <laughs> tactics. Yeah. And I'm not calling for intentionally injuring a player. But last night when it got rough, Tampa's a wounded animal mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. You're up five six goals there's nothing to play for the game's over why are you even trying to score dump the puck into mikhail sergachev's corner every single time and hit him send in achari and hit him send in aston reese and hit him send in lafferty and hit him just to grind send in nice and hit him legal hits all the time wear him down waves against the shore it all goes through him. If Hedman's out, Cernak's out, it goes through him. There isn't a more important player in the series right now than Mikhail Sergachev because of the situation that Tampa's in. Into his corner, hit him. That's the game plan. And even if it just knocks his confidence a bit. Knocks right? he, anything. He's gonna be he's gonna be sore, but sore every player, right? It's 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 about like just like getting inside somebody's head. If you are operating under the assumption, and I think the Leafs are that this series is going to go six or seven games. Make it so that game six and game seven are the worst games of his life. Make it so that he wakes up that morning going, fuck. Mm -hmm. Make it so that he doesn't look forward to coming to the rink. I'm not saying bean him in the head, Mike. You know, I'm play hockey. Play smart hockey against him. Do what every team has done to you since 2017. Speaking of Mike Bunting. Two, three game suspension, which was a game over what Steve and I thought. Two games over what Jesse thought. Unreal. I don't uh, get it. That's a crazy. That I mean, means it's basically what, a four game. What is that no, number? It's basically come? a six game. Well, seven because he got, oh, he got uh, the penalty hit. in the game. So 6.5. It feels like the Leafs regularly get suspensions that are the length that suspensions ought to be. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes. So I have a hard time complaining about the three because that ought to be three. It was a stupid hit, and it was a dirty hit, and it took a Tampa player out of the lineup. It can't happen. However, <laughs> the, where is this league-wide? Why the, has Thomas... Thomas Nosek got dick all. Did you see what he did to Eric Saul? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Elbowed him in the fucking yeah. head! No, but that's because they, they, they've they set a precedent where that's not how many games somebody gets suspended for this. Like, that's well, they not don't set precedences. Though. That's nobody the in the NHL gets suspended three games for what Michael Bunting did. But if now all of a sudden that's the right thing to do, I, did, I don't understand where three games comes from. A lot of people were talking about Nazem Kadri, and he very hilariously had the, come on, man, like, leave me out of this one uh, tweet. Did you see that? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, the one I keep going back to as a suspension that came out of absolute nonsense nowhere was uh jason spezza getting suspended six, six games yeah. for his hit in that jets game now it was a dirty hit and again he should be suspended intent to injure all that and mm-hmm. maybe it should be six games for that he played over a thousand games before that hit happened over nearly two decades mm-hmm. had a crystal clear record i don't even think he had a fine let alone a suspension. And he got suspended six games, and this is relevant, in a 56-game season? Yep. 9.3% of the season for a player with no history at all? Where the fuck did that come from? So 
I know Tampa fans are, are sick of the, oh, it's, you know, anti-Toronto whining or whatever. Fine. If you look at it at face value as whining, whatever. But what I'm asking about is specific incidences of why. I'm not, I'm not comparing bunting to Dumba. Mm-hmm. I understand why Dumba's hit is legal and Bunting's is not. Yeah. The Nosek one makes no sense. Can I can I play the explanation from the league? Hit me. Let's hear it. All right, Adam. Wow, these are your favorite people. High because sticking history. High sticking history. Uh, Matty, you can't show this one because they use footage. But so yeah. All right, here we go. Just the audio. Just the audio. That's the best thing the league does. Is that sound? <laughs> it's unreal. Tuesday night in Toronto, Maple Leafs forward Michael Bunting was assessed a match penalty for an illegal check to the head of Lightning defenseman Eric Chernak, causing an injury. As the video shows, the Maple Leafs win a face-off and take a shot towards the goal that bounces into the corner. Bunting and Chernak turn to locate the puck, with Bunting slightly ahead of Chernak. Then, as the puck wraps around the net, Bunting cuts back into Chernak, Mm -hmm. elevating significantly into the contact and picking his head making it the main point of contact on a hit where such head contact Ugh. was avoidable. This is both an illegal check to the head and interference. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a really It is important to, to note that both elements Let's of the illegal it. check to the head oh, rule are know. satisfied on this play. First, the head is clearly the main point of contact. Bunting's upper arm and elbow make forceful and direct contact with the head of Chernak, and it is the head that absorbs nearly all of the force oh of the God. check. He just doesn't need to do that Second, at all. the head contact on this play is avoidable. Hmm. Bunting unnecessarily extends his body upward into Chernak's yes, head he to deliver this check, missing his core completely and picking the head. He's not even looking! It is also important to note that this is also interference. Chernak is never in possession of the puck during this sequence. Yeah, but you don't get suspended and for your have no reason right. to expect to be checked, making him particularly vulnerable. Yeah, yes. but that's... That's this a really is good point, by the way. In which two players approaching not the puck simultaneously yeah. are mutually prepared for contact to occur as they battle for space. The puck is some distance from both players when contact is initiated by bunting. This is an illegal check to the head delivered to a player who has no reason to anticipate any contact, let alone contact with sufficient force to cause an injury. To summarize, Key points. this is an illegal check to the head ah! and interference. Chernak suffered an injury on the play. Bunting has been neither fined nor suspended previously in his 187-game NHL career. That's it? The Department of Player Safety. I, like, they they convinced me a little. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they convinced they're, me they're a they're lot. Not it's, wrong. A, it's a, I want to argue against it yeah. in three games. The only part of that video I will disagree with is they go... Cernak has no reason to assume contact. Shut up. That's no, con- that, I no. It's that's, dishonest. No, that's the main point that got me because like that's they're a hundred percent right in that that's not a situation where he's expecting to be bean like that. He's not expecting the puck to be is in hit. the corner. He's not expecting to be hit. But like there's a, we see battles like that. Yes, a thousand times a game. It, but the hits, he's not eligible to be hit. Exactly. Flatly. Yeah. Flatly. So no argument. It makes it a little bit even more dangerous. Yeah, I I would just like to see this more. I I also I, I don't find have a problem with three games. Odd. I guess they are allowed to do this, but the amount that a player is injured is taken into effect here. I didn't realize that that was a criteria because I don't think that's how it should be. I don't think the result of what you did should affect the punishment. It's not until it is. Yeah, they, they're very pick and choosy. Well, with that. the thing is, they don't establish standards, so then they don't have to be held to them. <laughs> well, right? That we've talked about that before, and that's yeah. that's their playbook. And and we could sit here and bitch and whine and complain about it. Bunting deserved two games, or he deserved three games. Yeah. I I don't have a problem with what the league did here. Uh, what is interesting, though, what's very interesting, is the fan reaction to to this because you know Tampa Tampa Bay fans were noticeably pissed about it obviously so it's, it's a horrible hit but so we're like so we're leaf fans and you know you put it out there last night about or i put it out there on, on my twitter about uh matt nice the way he's played you cannot take him out of the lineup even when bunting becomes available you can't you can't if he keeps this up you cannot take him out. i don't know where he goes well and so this is the thing a lot of people are like let him golf and, i don't and know I, where he goes and i think that's really interesting for a guy that scored over 100 points in the last two years that had 50 points this year, 23 goals, and people are like, fucking keep him out. 
That's that's when we talk about liability, and and you know Who when we first out? started bringing this up, people It'll were be like, mad nice. people were saying, uh, uh, you know, three four months ago in February, you start bringing this up, people were like, oh, you guys, you're, you're overreacting, you're overreacting. Look where we are. He did not get a hold of Sheldon Keefe has tried to reach this player. You're, you're going to give four times four to a healthy scratch? Absolutely not. No, he's not going to be a Leaf next year. They've been, they're, Myrtle I don't know. Reported, Myr, no, no, no. I do. Myrtle reported this morning there have been no contract negotiations. Well, that doesn't mean it's they, not happening. Sheldon, lo- or sorry, he, or Dubas loves an in-season extension. Loves yeah, an in-season does. extension. He does, doesn't he? I don't think, I think they're waiting to see whether this guy can put a head on his shoulders. And I wonder, even when <laughs> he becomes available, are the Leafs like, why would we change this? If they, the Leafs keep winning... Why would you change anything? If, if you're not putting Michael Bunting back in the lineup, you're not putting him back in the lineup because you're afraid that uh, his head's going to get uh, too hot and he's going to do something dumb. Because then you, you're keeping the better player out of the lineup by scratching him. Like, he's a better player than Matthew Nyes. I don't, there's no, like, argument about that. One he's dude has played NHL four career player, right? NHL Certainly games. more established, yeah. Yeah, so... If you, if you scratch him, it's a bet entirely on we need him not on the ice because he's going to do something dumb. Well, and if you what's he shown you? If you believe that, like I can't fault you because all of the evidence throughout his career has been that yeah, I believe he that. might fuck up. I believe that when a coach gets fired, uh, or right, uh, not when a coach gets fired, before a coach gets fired, what do they say? Uh, the coach has lost the room. Uh-huh. What does that mean when a coach loses the room? That means they've tuned him out. Yeah, it means they're not listening. Yeah. The Leafs need a roster of 18 players who listen. He doesn't listen. I don't know what to do about that. He's fast. He's gritty. He wins battles. He can set up plays. He can score. And he can get. He could cost them the game. This was a winnable game. It was 4-2 in the second period. He, could, he might even have been in the guy that scored the goal that got them the 4-3. No one would be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked. He's he's perfectly baked into their play uh, their game plan. He's an ideal playoff player, except for he keeps getting kicked out of fucking games. God, are we getting deja vu or what? Like so, uh, Nas, I, I I hate the comparison, and no, you don't deserve to be talked about right now. Enjoy your off season and stare at your Stanley Cup ring all summer. That's what I would do, but. God, am I am I seeing some parallels? There's a player who provides something that the Leafs don't have in abundance who cannot or will not stay in the lineup. What are we supposed to do with this information, Mike? Yarn Croak's not coming out. We, we know Kerfoot's not coming out. Hell will freeze over before Keith takes Kerfoot out. I don't I don't see a situation where Aston Reese comes out or it makes sense to take Aston Reese mm-hmm. out. So really it's nice. Mm-hmm. And I tell you what, if he plays great. Over the next two games, if the Leafs are up three games to one, come game five when Bunting's... You are not taking no him out. fucking way. That, to me, was one of the biggest mistakes of Keefe's coaching tenure, is he, uh, after the Leafs went up 2-1 against Montreal, he took out Sandine and put in Dermott. What did the Leafs do? They won 4 nothing. And what did he do? He went back to Sandine. What? Stop dicking with the lineup. You're up 3-1. You just won 4 nothing. Just leave it. Leave it! And then Sandine had a bad game five. And it helped cost them the series. So if they're up 3-1, when his suspension's up, fuck that. You want to you wanna play him game one in round two if you get there? Mm-hmm. Fine. Fine. It's a good under- reset. It's a good reset. I totally understand that. If they have an opportunity to close this out in Game 5, not a fucking chance. And even if they don't close out in Game 5, I don't think you put them in in Game 6. The more that this if, if this... if the Leafs get to three wins in this series, I don't think you can play Michael Bunting. It's tough. I don't think you can. It's Come on, tough. guys. Are you comfortable with that? Honestly, tell me. I Are you comfortable? I'm. Uh, people are going to feel like this is picking on them. It's so disappointing to me because we called this for months. And then it happened, and no one was surprised. And I think fans are really, really, like, they're really, like, it's not like they're mad, they're disappointed. I mean, he, right? he betrayed Sheldon Keefe, in a way, because Keefe had taken his toys away. He had taken them off the top line, and Keefe goes, I'm betting on you, kid. And he puts them back on there, I think it was in the final regular season game, and then to start the playoffs. This is where you should be, Mike. I'm betting on you. 
what does he do? Cost him a playoff game. And everyone's job depends on it. What are you supposed to do? Will be very interesting to see what happens uh, when uh, they come back to Toronto. Because either way, they're coming back. So well, we'll they're going to be down three one, up three one, tied two two. How much do you make on selling each of your season tickets for the playoff games? <laughs> I don't have season tickets, uh, and so I make zero dollars. Yeah, Why? He makes a lot Why? Of I just want to know. Like, do I need to sell him to Bunting? You're making or? a good profit. <laughs> I mean, the I'm thing, just curious. The thing about that is Adam doesn't need the money. He does it for. Mm. I do it for the walls. No, the I, if I don't bigger. feel like going, I just leave the seats empty. Mm. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> just burn the Adam tickets. Adam counterfeits tickets and mobs people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's bring on Dave, and then we're going to get to the rest of the series. You can bet that with David Bastel. Brought to you by Sports Interaction. Get in the action and make a play. 19 plus. Please play responsibly. All right. Don't forget to go to danglepicks.com. And get yourself in for that uh, Sports Interaction-sponsored uh, pl- prize pack, including a uh, Mitch Marner uh, signed jersey. And by the way, you do this before every single game. And I'm not sure if we mm-hmm. explained that enough on Monday. Is that like you get to win. It's not just one jersey. If this season, if the series goes seven games, it's seven different jerseys that are available. You better have seven, Dave. Yeah, Dave. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we have 25 in the closet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. What all different sizes and colors, all different signet. No, I'm just, no, we, have, we have everything. We got yeah. you covered. If they're going to the cup, we got it for the cup. Today. Yeah. And the, oh. the game's like a little harder than you think because the questions seem easy, but then you're like, oh, I got that wrong. So you, you yeah. go to Dango Picks and it'll be like, oh, how many power plays will the Leafs get? And it'll be like, I'll put like three plus. And then like, and, but then I'm wrong. And yeah. They get oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the other thing is, <laughs> is if you bet hard on one team and they lose like the Leafs did on Tuesday, uh, you're not getting any points. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. I sure bet hard on the Leafs. Oh, well, I bet hard on the Leafs game too. Now, Dave, tonight, yes, sorry, uh, for Saturday night, we got the, the lines already. What do we have Leafs in Tampa here at sportsinteraction.com? Yeah, it's a little bit closer, and I think a lot of it has to do with home ice advantage for the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm actually kind of surprised in a way that the Leafs are actually favorites in game number three. I thought maybe it would kind of change over slight wow. Tampa lean, but it is the Leafs at a one eight four. Tampa coming in at a one nine nine, so just under two. Uh, six and a half seems to be a common over under between these two teams because you got a lot of firepower, and we are also looking at two games so far that have gone over the total. Uh, but right now, guys, the Leafs' uh, favorites on the road. What are your thoughts about that? I mean, I like it. I hope they march Terrifying. into to Tampa and do the same things that they did last night. I think it's going to be a little harder with the crowd against them. But, uh, I mean, listen, I feel like the team we saw last night is a heck of a lot more like the Leafs we know yeah. than the than, Monday, than Tuesday night's game, right? So yeah, that's yeah. what I keep saying. <laughs> that's what we keep telling for. myself and my uh, therapist. Also, a couple of Ontario-born players. Uh, we got Nick Paul and Corey Perry at four and a half to one to score a goal. Oh boy, that's good value. Corey Perry has scored twice in this series already. Yeah. And it's two yeah, for two. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I threw that out there because it's the Corey Perry factor. That pain in the ass seems to be uh, around the net all the time, and you're almost getting five times your money. Um, so I thought, okay, two goals this series. Is he going to make it three? Might be worth uh, an opportunity. And Nick Paul, although he's not a goal scorer, he's he's that he's that little bit of a thorn in the side. Of it. Even with the Senators, this guy was always around the net. He's not going to get you a lot of goals, but does he score in Game Three? Is it worth a little bit of a risk? I think it might be. I I circle Perry before Paul though. Their their bigger guys have been a little quiet, but he's been good. Something to look yep. out for, too, is sometimes you get some really interesting value. And, and I'm going off the board here, Dave, because you weren't prepared for this question. But you were talking about, and, and, and for people that hear this on Saturday morning, I apologize. But for Friday night, uh, Oilers and L.A., there's something yep. that you pointed out. You're like, wow, I'm kind of surprised given how the first two games have gone that this is the case. Yes. Uh, you know what? I, I, I looked at this series very similar to the, what we talked about with the Leafs and the Lightning, where I thought, okay, the series shifts back to Los Angeles. The Kings will be the favorites in this one, but they are not. The Oilers are favorites on the road at Sports Interaction for that Friday game. And I'm a little surprised because I look at I look at uh, the Kings and Oilers as very similar, um, not not styles per se, but the quality. So yeah. if you're in L.A., L.A.'s the favorite. If you're in Edmonton, Edmonton's the favorite, even more so than where I'd grade Toronto and Tampa because I think there is a, a little bit more of an edge that Toronto has over Tampa overall but I don't see that in this Kings Oilers series I don't know about you guys 
McDavid has been held in check by Mr. Yes. Philip Deneau and Anze Kopitar. The fact that the Kings are a home dog. Like yep. take that every single day. Yeah. Yeah. They look thin. Yeah. absolutely fantastic. Well, I also I also want to just shout out all the Edmonton fans who are like, I can't believe you guys lost to Montreal in the first round. Tavares was out, and then they put Deneau on Matthews. What does Matthews. that have to do with anything? Well, I, I'm just saying no, Deneau. No. What are you talking Let about? him cook. <laughs> hey, I'm talking about Phil Deneau, my guy, who's one of the best defensive centers in the league. Come on, man. There's a point. Yeah. Let me finish the point before you cut no, me off this, on this it. This is definitely Jeez. about the Leafs. He, just, he took the scenic route, but he got there. <laughs> yeah, I did get there. We thank you. 2015. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, listen, I never forget a Leafs loss. Anyway, Dave, thanks so much for the call. Go Jets go, buddy. Oh, I love you guys. Have a nice weekend. Well, okay, so let me ask you this. Can I, uh, can we start with Brandon Tanev? The kiss of death. So he, you know, Seattle uh, has another great start against the Avalanche. They're up 2 nothing after Tanev's goal. He blows a kiss. He cost me two bucks. Did he? Why? That fucker. Did you bet against? Yeah, the Seattle was up one nothing, and Drew was so down on the Avs, and uh, S, uh, Sports Interaction had Seattle at plus 105, and they were winning. And I'm like, oh, $2, Steve, right there. Then they go up 2 nothing. Tanev with the kiss of death, and it was the last goal they scored. That's right. The Avalanche came back, win, win the game. Lost my two bucks. And, and I wonder, you know, like, listen, the Kraken have been known as the team team, right? They are like, <laughs> the, this is like the team of team. I... I was confused at first, and then I was like, no, that's actually perfect. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, they, yeah. they, they play team game. No, There's no big, like, superstar, but they kind of do everything by committee. And it's, you know, I, I understand a team having swagger, but when you're, like, a team team, you can't be you can't be doing stuff like that. Or maybe, I mean, I, I think it makes the league way more interesting. They're like, they're like a well-disciplined elementary class. Yeah. Like, I just picture uh, Dave Haxtell walking in there going, da-da-da-da-da, and the whole room goes, da-da. <laughs> Very attentive. Did any of your teachers ever do that? No, I had, like, I had the teachers that did the boring, like, one and by three, if you were still talking, go to detention or whatever. No. Oh. Miss Fulpe. She was, she was a big, da-da-da-da-da, and we all go, da da Oh, that's cool. I yep. like that. That's way better. Shut up. Way less threatening, too. <laughs> there were days where it sounded threatening. Yeah, I bet it. <laughs> and in retrospect, earned. Right. Fair enough. She was right. Fair enough. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's uh, uh, the Tanev thing blowing this kiss is kind of unfortunate for the Seattle Kraken, who've looked very, very good in this series. Um Evan Rodriguez is looking like a pretty good, uh, pretty good player for them. Uh, Lekkinen, That's, obviously, Natushkin. You need uh, goals from people you need. Yeah. Devon no, Taves. The story, the story of the game is Devon Taves get p- pot in that rebound. Oh. And how, like, um, who was it? Kale McCarr in his post game interview was like, the team runs through Devon Taves or something. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> no, uh, I, think, I think he even said uh, Taser or whatever nickname, stupid hockey nickname he gave him. I love but it. those guys absolutely love Taves. And um, it, was, it was cool to see him have that moment and then everybody talk about him post game. I think the only people that need to be angry are that Colorado only got him for two second round picks. Mm-hmm. Other than like every other team in the league has got to be the Islanders who had him I, and could have kept him. So I was just looking it up. The Avs gave up three second round picks. Oh, it was three. Well, two for Devon Taves, one for Arturi Lekkinen. Oh. They didn't give up a first for either of those guys oh. and they stuck around. Lekkinen is so underrated. So underrated. We should have listened to Habs fans. Now that he's on a good team, I see how good he is. <laughs> I'm just being a dick. But uh, no, he's unreal. Taves is unreal. Yeah. J- Joe Sack calls. You send that shit to voicemail. I Georgiev hate- had a rough start, and then yes. he kept them in the game. So I, I like uh, when they were down two nothing. Georgiev uh, was in there. I was like, this could get bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. And then they all, the entire team, just uh, they they hunkered down and they and they got to it. And Yuri made a couple of really good saves that kept them in the game. One on a breakaway by uh, Yanni Gord. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, the Colorado, they they look good. Uh, Grubauer made thirty eight saves. Where has this been? Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, I like, know. But we were talking about Martin Jones and how good he's going to be. And then they start Grubauer. I'm like, oh, so they're dead. And all of a sudden, he's like pre-shit Philip Grubauer. Yeah, it's crazy. I, and it's good to see. Interesting that it's against his own team. I he mean, was unplayable is last this, year. Uh, completely. Unplayable. And, par- and partially this year, too. 
and it wasn't pretty, great this year. And yeah, he lost his job to Martin Jones, and now here he is. So I have a question: If the Colorado Avalanche win the next game, mm. do we start to talk about the Brandon Tenev kiss as the kiss of death? No, not until the series is over. No, they're going back to climate pledge. The the place that Bezos built is going to be the first ever playoff game in Seattle. Um, I That'll be fun. They got to win that for the fans. CEO entrepreneur. That, that, that's got to be their goal song. <laughs> it should be. The Bezos <laughs> song. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Bezos. The whole arena. <laughs> <laughs> Just going nuts. See, how haven't they done that? If the world was actually fun, that would be the uh, goal song. If Come you on, were, Jeffrey. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah, come on. If you were Who's him, not losing their shit to that? Who do you think, like, I, how many, which of his under Underlings, do you think showed him that song for the first time? Like he wasn't at home watching that. You think he's seen it? He must have. I don't know. Must have heard about it by now. I Show me know. the video. Ha <laughs> <laughs> You know what we talk? Bring a me a fresh <laughs> goblet of blood. <laughs> we talk a, a weird amount about Jeffrey Bezos on the show. Oh, he's sort of a like big he comes fat. up all the time. <laughs> I don't know. Why. Sort of like a big factor in everyone's lives these days. You know. Well, I mean, a package arrived. Before the show started, Jesse, who was it from? That was from Amazon. Come on, Jeffrey. You, you can, can do it. it. <laughs> Put you back into it. Um, <laughs> Tell us why. Tell us how. Uh, Don't make me do the whole thing. Uh, so uh, now I, I do want to move to the Rangers and Devils here because the Rangers. I, first off, I was told that Patrick Kane was going to hurt. Yeah. Uh, yeah no. Patrick Kane was supposed to hurt the Rangers. Um. Uh, Definitely, Adam, yeah. Adam, Adam Fox is number one with Mitch Marner in the league in points. Mitch Marner and Adam Fox currently are leading the point. They b- both have six. Wow. Okay. Uh, but but um, uh, Patrick Kane Awful has washed. terrible. Uh, he's got Old. four points in two games. Old guy. Can't you know, he's, uh, I, like literally people are like, this hurts their chances. He's not going to be. He's taking up a roster spot of a guy who's just not. Like, he's better. Top six sucks with Patrick Kane. Yeah, I know. Like. Thanks, guys. Guys, Tarasenko and Kane <laughs> were stars one and three for the Rangers last night. I and they got those guys for like what a bag of bag of pucks? Like I think there are stats out there that are incredibly useful, and there are others that break our brains. Into thinking Patrick Kane makes your team worse than it was before. I assure you, it doesn't. It's I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb. Guys, this is why you tune in to this show for hot fucking analysis. I think having good players on good teams makes you better. But what if he's not a good player? Dun, dun, dun. Like the stats said. Well, uh, I don't think they did. What stats? Well, I don't know. If there was- it was such nonsense. It was like a, it was the week after they got him. It, maybe it was like kind of like two weeks. It was, it was a few games. Um, he didn't play well. Uh, defensively, especially, like there was a lot of turnovers, a lot of he's the not puck, a good defensive. The puck player. going the other way and them scoring, but it's like that wasn't the point of them getting Patrick fucking Kane. It was for this moment in the playoffs in Game Two when he buries a goal and everyone's going crazy and he's the first star and everything's amazing. That's why they got him not to play defense in Game Sixty Four of the regular season. I'm With sorry, Chicago. Like, I'm sorry. No. This is it. Everything's good. <laughs> you look at the Rangers' right side. I just don't know the fathomable argument that the Rangers, who had Jimmy VC as their top-line right winger. like I, I didn't know he was a right winger. I don't think he ever played it on the Leafs when he was here for a hot minute. Um, he was their top-line right winger and did way better than anyone could have expected. And he was replaced with Tarasenko and Kane. And people were like, I don't Downgrade. know. Downgrade. <laughs> um, no as yeah. it turns out and so uh first period of kraken colorado made me look like an idiot because i was very low on the kraken and then colorado comes i think it was more high on colorado than i was low on the kraken um i so far through two games it's gonna be a long series but they're going to madison square i couldn't have been more right <laughs> about this series so far. And Jesse, I got to tell you, um, if the Leafs can't do it for you, mm-hmm. I think there's a real good chance it's the Rangers' year. It's a pretty good one, too. Um, I feel bad for Devils fans because I think going all season, you know, you're you're riding the high of, 
of that winning streak and then you have a team with the crazy improvement from last year like when everybody kind of doubted that they could do it and then now they get to the playoffs and it's a whole different kind of animal their game doesn't suit what the rangers dish out and Which is what I the said. team defense that the rangers are playing like right now is unbelievable and they're just being able, they've they've matched up perfectly with the, what the devils do best and um it, they've just been shut out and uh, there's not really it, when you lose the first two games at home like there's not real hope heading out for the rest of the series and Vitek Vanacek hasn't been anything that he was during the regular season like there's a big hole for their first two games is really bad goaltending and so and really unfortunate is uh, Tampa screwed it up for you Devils fans if you're hoping to win it in six uh, because the Rangers more than anyone know that you can't take your foot off the gas when going up to nothing no in the series. Out. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I... They got to squeak a win out here, though. I hate I doing this because so. I'm so I think they win in game wrong three. when I make these bold proclamations, but I think they're dead. I think the Rangers have this. I don't know in don't, how many games they have it, but they have it. I can't wait for this to run on the Prudential Center. Uh, <laughs> I think Steve. they're dead. <laughs> Steve underscore Dangle. No, Actually, I don't that think app's dying. It's Just a, Steve Dangle on YouTube. SDPN. Let's go. I don't think it's a bold prediction to say that the team that just won two straight games on the road is going to win a playoff Well, Jesse, series. it was a bold prediction to say Patrick Kane makes your team better. So maybe. <laughs> no, that was real bold. Oh, Ooh. and Tarasenko. Oh. And having one of the best goaltenders in the world is a good thing, and maybe the best defenseman in the world. And, I think. Oh, my, Chris Kreider's amazing. My hesitance with <laughs> uh, any team acquiring Kane was the price, and then the price plummeted. And well, okay, here you go. Yeah. Pennies on the dollar for a dude who I promise does not make your team worse. Kreider got two more goals last night too, extending his uh, Rangers records. Every time he scores, he sets a new record. How many playoff games has he played again? Five hundred. Uh, yeah, Chris Kreider. <laughs> Six. <laughs> Six hundred. He's, yeah, six hundred. No it's way. been a lot. It's it, wasn't it close? Yeah, we to, did it last game, right? Yeah, yeah. eighty-eight. I think it was. No, it's, yeah, I think he's over a hundred, man. What is it? Click it. Uh, ooh, uh, load. He has played. I'm going to beat Adam to it. Exactly one hundred. Wow. Exactly one hundred. Nice. It's exactly one hundred. He has thirty-four goals, twenty-one assists, fifty-five points. That is wild. It's a lot. He has played thirty-eight digit, goals. Actually, uh, double that, digit. Whatever penalty. site you're looking at has not been updated. It's thirty-eight goals. In uh, 102 games. Hockey DB? Is not updated. NHL.com is saying 102 games. Oh, you don't have last night's game. Oh, weird. One, two, three, four, five. He has four goals in the playoffs already this year. That's so stupid. He's played double-digit playoff games in a season five times. Mm -hmm. And I think this year is six. That's right. Um, Okay. (laughs) Uh, Moving on to uh, the next game here. Uh, The last one last night. Golden Knights come roaring back against the Winnipeg Jets. And honestly, I think it was the Mark Stone coming out party. He was the first star. Big goal at the end of the game. Uh, He looked really rusty in game one, but this guy has been waiting. And when he scores, he celebrates. There are, oh yeah, he's a wild man. Wild. Loves a goal. Horrible artist. But uh, yeah. <laughs> did he do the writing or the, yeah, the drawing thing? Yeah, Agard played kind of thing. Puctionary with him, and he's useless. With, oh, with really? A, with a marker. He, okay. He's, he's poo. Oh, wow. He can be forgiven, I think. Jack Eichel scoring last night. That might have got him going. Like, it was a rough game one. Yeah. You know, I hope that, like, sparks him. He looked so jacked after scoring that goal. Like, he turned to the crowd. He did the, like, arms in the air. Oh, kind yeah. Of thing. Eight got, years after he was drafted. Yeah, like, yeah I score your first playoff goal. Like, it was unreal for him. It was a great moment. Now, sometimes, like, there's so many words exchanged on this show um, mm-hmm. uh, that sometimes we don't get to say everything that we want to. And I'm glad I didn't get to say everything that I want to last show uh, because we were looking at the uh, game one ice time from Jets Golden Knights. Yeah. And I looked at Eichel and I looked at Stone playing over 20 minutes each. And Stone in his first game in God knows how long. And I was just, I was going to say, I don't know if that was the right move by Bruce Cassidy because mm. he's coming off an injury and who knows if he's 100%. Bruce Cassidy knows if he's 100% and turns out he is. Just needs a couple games to get warmed up. I'm glad I didn't say it and I feel comfortable saying it to you now. One of the big things they talk about on the broadcast is the battle of the Winnipeg goaltender versus the ex-Winnipeg goaltender. And I thought Brass- Brassois held his, his, held his ground last night like... He was great. Um, early on, you know, you, you go down you go down early, it's not it's not great, but like just he was just as good as Hellebuck that entire game. He was strong. 
He was strong. Mm-hmm. It and it's so weird because like healthy. Where is he on the depth chart for Vegas? Hmm. I mean, he's definitely behind Logan Thompson. He's he's won it now. Well, yeah. Like now it's your job. But yeah, coming in, like where was he? Hmm. I I thought. Uh, like Logan Thompson was a cool story last year, but he would ultimately lose his job to Aiden Hill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, uh, man, what like, a fascinating situation. Do you count Robin man. Leonard on that? Well, no, because we knew he was going to be out all season from the hop. Yeah. Right? But, like, if everybody in their organization is healthy, where does Brussois rank coming in? AHL. He's, he's claimed off waivers is what he is. Right? The mm-hmm. Vegas is forced to put him on waivers, and he's claimed. He's playing for Arizona. Hill, too. I mean, yeah. oh, geez, uh, healthy Robin Leonard with uh, Logan Thompson. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, the uh, the last game from last night, and then we're going to get to uh, all the games from tonight. Uh, you, Oh, wait, that we already yeah, gave that you that. So let's get it. I was so, like, didn't yeah. we just do that? We did. Okay. We did. So I was going to go to Bruins Panthers next, which was a disaster third period. <laughs> but the thing that Jesse and Steve are most fired up about is the wow. Wild and their goaltending. Now, the Wild lost 7-3, which is wild that the Dallas Stars were able to pot seven goals in a game without yeah. Pavelski. My uh, goal prediction for that series is already ruined. It's done. I, I They've thought, already outscored what you thought they could do. Yeah, I thought it was going to be six or seven, three, two games. So, Jesse, what'd you get so fired up about? I don't, I don't think I'm alone. I think there are hundreds of millions of Minnesota Wild fans who are looking at Dean Evanson and saying, "Understatement! What? What? What are you doing, sir?" <laughs> Philip Gustafson comes off one of the best performances we've seen of these short playoffs in mm-hmm. Game One, <laughs> steals in a the game yep. in a victory, looks fantabulous, mm-hmm. and Dean Evanson says, "You know what?" All season long, we've been doing this thing where we play one goalie and then we play the other goalie and then we play the other goalie and then we play the other goalie. We did it for the most amount that any team did it all season long. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that despite all of the evidence in front of me that, hey, ride the goalie who looked absolutely fantabulous in game one. So Dean Evanson decides, hey, sit down, Gustafson. I don't care how many 40 plus save games you make. I'm going to play Marc-Andre Fleury in game two. That's three times Stanley Cup winner, Marc-Andre Fleury. That is true. Alan Walsh client, Marc-Andre Fleury. And Marc-Andre Fleury, despite his his terrific resume and despite being an awesome human being, did not have a good hockey game. There was an instance where uh, Minnesota was getting back into the game. Uh, I believe they were down by two at that point. And Marc-Andre Fleury let in a back-breaking goal. For it to allow Dallas to go up by three. He had the puck and it, and it squeaked out of his body. And it went into the back of the net. Uh, and those mistakes are unforgivable. And the mistake of not playing the goaltender who just came off of a great performance is a little unforgivable, Mr. Evanson. And I don't know why they made the decision. I think it's a very bad one. I think anybody looking at it would have just played Philip Gustafson. Oh, guys. Oh, Kurt. Kurt Overhart, the agent for Philip Gustafson, just tweeted a, a photo of uh, Gustafson with a sword. In his <laughs> Stop it. Oh, no. <laughs> I do want to say this. If <laughs> Does it now make it easier for Evanson going forward, despite the fact that they're down now, or they're tied? So, sorry. Um, mm-hmm. Does it make it e- easy for Evanson to just say, we're not doing the tandem goalie thing? We're riding the hot hand. And uh, I also have a really great gift for you that I want to show off that is Dean Evanson. So can you, uh, it's in your text messages. Is it him looking sternly at something? (laughs) Yes, actually, it is. It's the best, it's the best gif ever. Terrifying. Uh, This is the best gif on hockey Twitter. And I, I, somebody tweeted this at me last night. (laughs) Darn. (laughs) (laughs) There's a Bruce Boudreaux version of that. (laughs) Darn. I'm curious uh, what Flurry thought of that. Mm. Um, plan. I mean, players want to play, obviously. Taylor Swift taught me that. But is thank you for the she pity, taught you a lot. Laugh. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Taylor Swift taught me that. Don't encourage him, Maddie. Now it's you know you can look at uh, t- sixteen and seventeen when the Penguins won and Flurry and Murray exchanging games and stuff like that. But it was out of necessity. Yeah, mm-hmm. guys got hurt, right? And it's different when you're like, all right, it's my duty to play here. But I think it's a whole other thing when you're asked to play and you're like, really? (laughs) I mean, like, 
Who knows goaltending better than Marc Andre Fleury? And I'm sure he thinks he's cock of the walk, but I know he was on the bench in game one going, holy fuck, Phil's playing his ass off yeah. <laughs> right now and probably should play game two. And I wonder what that does to a goalie. It's it's funny. We didn't. Holy shit! That photo is terrifying. Is that on the screen right now? This is it's a video. I was waiting for you to make a point, and then we okay. Because Dean Evanson offered up an explanation. I'm ready. Well, so we, I'm we, ready for his eyes to stare into my soul. What well, the series we thought this was going to happen in was uh, Boston with <laughs> Allmark and because Swayman. They'd be too good. Well, there's that. But, like, Allmark and Swayman exchange games all season. This is fucking terrifying. They, they exchange games all season, but Boston stuck with Allmark. Now, it's funny. You know, you can, you can take whatever you want from it. Because you can look at Boston not switching and getting their ass kicked and go, Ah! Jim Montgomery's stupid for mm. not switching. And then Dean Evison does switch. And they get their ass kicked, and you go, ah! But I don't think anybody... If Phil Augustuson went in there and allowed four straight goals on, on butterfly shots, you know? Like, it was it would be awful. But I don't think anybody would have blamed Dean Evanson for starting him. Uh, someone might have, because, oh, it's what you've been doing all season. I I kind of admire him sticking to the I don't plan. think anybody would have said that. I don't think so either, Jesse. <laughs> I, 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 have to say, I don't know that. where that, I'm that with side you. is. They would have said that I'm with and would have been... Incorrect. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, it's like, listen, uh, I think people forget the reason that you alternate goalies all year. It's because it's 82 fucking games. Yeah. And, and you, then so you pick the playoffs. It's not that. No. Play them. No, and there's no back-to-backs and stuff like that. No, I, I mean, it's nothing against Flurry at all. Gustafson should have played game two. I have one request, Jesse. Before you press play on this video, mm. please bring the video up and don't press play. I just want people to see <laughs> Dean Evison's face. Maddie, there you yeah. go. Like, holy, God. holy shit! <laughs> Darn, indeed. Okay, go ahead. He must terrify people in regular life. I, Hi, welcome to Subway. Can I take your? Uh! I'd like a cold cut trio. <laughs> All right, here we go. Or tonight, after Gus had uh, 51 saves last game. It's just, it's what we do, right? We've done it all year. Um, it's the the game. There's no. Nothing was on flower tonight. It was all on us. Why the change in terms of the style of play from game one to game two? That looked like that was very much Dallas's way of doing things, and the Wild kind of fell into that trap and the odd man rushes giveaways. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we gave up an odd man rush in game one. Um, I don't know. We'll have to watch and see how many we actually gave up. Um, they played great. We did not. I didn't hear a word that fucking All that being said, <laughs> Dean, you're down 4-1. You get a couple of quick goals. You get it to 4-3. Oh, he's he's going to kill oh, someone. You he's going to kill someone. Room, at least within one. And that, those last five minutes seem to be a backbreaker. Yeah. And actually, we had a breakaway that wasn't an offside. Um, and I know it's tough, right? Um, Everyone in that room is in point. danger. You know, Bolds has a clear breakaway. Second best scorer on our team. But... Um, you know, I, it's it's tough. I mean, we, like I said, we we didn't play very well, obviously, um, and they played uh, really well. So. Put Dean Evison in the Harry Potter series, or we riot. Yeah. yeah. Also, I said point. I said earlier they got within two. They got within one. I forgot. It wasn't it? Was a two goal? They yeah. got within one, and yeah. then yeah. they they fucked it up at the end of that period. And they got within one, and then Dean Evans went and murdered a bunch of cats. I'm gonna creepily lick my <laughs> lips as I stare <laughs> re- just to the back of your skull. <laughs> is that no eyes, no brain? Is straight to the back of your skull. We did this all year for 82 games. I'm gonna keep doing it. Mm-hmm. So I'm, man, oh, fuck, that's a terrifying. Can we guy. just? Can we just? Can we do a um, uh, a, a daily check in with Dean Evison and how angry he looks lately? Like, <laughs> like, can we just just check it in with Dean? Uh, and, you know, when his tongue came out of his mouth, like he's sticking it. He's like, he, was like where oh was this dude God. in the '90s? He would have never been out of work as an actor. No. Hi, we need a terrifying and oddly off-putting groundskeeper. Like, just he's, for- he's like the original villain in a Marvel origin story. Oh, you know, like the first villain. Yes, like. Uh, He's just regular evil, not like alien or magic evil. Hi. uh, Yes. uh, uh, We need a teacher who's unnecessarily strict for a children's film. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) 
He could be. Uh, what was the one from Honey? Do you remember the? Uh, uh, do you remember the movie Honey? Uh, oh man, Mis- he could be Mister Trunchable. <laughs> I was Miss Honey. Honey? How, wasn't it? No, that's Miss Honey. What's that? That's what the, is that the movie called? The teacher's name is Miss Honey. Oh, what's that movie called? Matilda. Matilda is the name of the child. He could be Mister Trunchable. <laughs> I think. Filch that, with that's short what you hair. called Maddie for years, right? Called her <laughs> honey, I called her. Honey. <laughs> no, I didn't. Ah, uh, it was Maggie, and I'm embarrassed. Crooked <laughs> cop in a Batman film. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's a perfect crooked cop in a Batman film. Specifically in a Batman film. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's he's in a... Yeah, anyway, long story short. Um, Now, I want to talk about the Panthers and the Bruins. Because this game looked relish... screen. Yeah, he's, he's, he's intimidating me. I'm, can I... Dean, am I allowed to get into the next segment or what? He's looking at us, too. Um, no Look goals. No goals scored in the first period of the Florida and Boston game. Uh, but in period two, each of them had two goals. So you go into the third period, things are pretty evenly matched, and that's when things kind of got out of hand. Four goals to one. Uh, and it's interesting because uh, Boston's goal didn't come to, like, the very end. Adam, do you like professional wrestling? I do. It's fine. Over a 20-second span, Rad mm-hmm. Kogutis gave Brad Marchand two rock bottoms and three angle slams <laughs> and was called for none of them. And I couldn't believe it. Right. I absolutely. They, I mean, gosh, those games sure seem to follow the Bruins around. Whether whether it's to their benefit or their detriment, where <laughs> nothing gets called. Mm-hmm. And uh, Marshan was getting thrown all around the ice. It's unacceptable. Yeah. yeah. Gudis should have been called. And again, I go back to it's it. It's unacceptable, but I don't feel bad. Oh, I didn't that. say it wasn't. Funny. So satisfying. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't like either of those guys. I hope the series goes seven. Mm-hmm. And both of them play 45 minutes a game. Yep. On principle. Um, but also the Nosek hit on stall. And we were talking earlier about injury being a factor. Nosek was able to chirp stall on the bench because stall went there. Uh, and we haven't read anything about him not playing game three. So I guess he's okay. Um, but like both of those things have to be called in mm-hmm. any league that has aspirations of being a professional sports league. Um, but they're just letting them play. Uh, Florida's so much tougher than I thought. They're a very mean team. I yeah, they are. I didn't expect that months. at all. Oh, the, dude, the uh, not so much this year, obviously, because they're not the President's Trophy winning Florida Panthers. But they were tough nuts. Uh, going head to head with Tampa all preseason, regular season, and playoffs long. Tampa outclassed them in terms of playing hockey, mm-hmm. but no, they've uh, they they've been a tough, uh, agitating, borderline dirty team. And then they added Matthew Kachuk. Like it took a while for them to hit their stride, but they're almost better suited. Um, now that they got Chucky in Flu- the lineup. Fluto Shinzawa, who is a uh, Bruins reporter for The Athletic, uh, is saying today that it's... Well, actually, Jim Montgomery said today that it's likely that Bergeron makes his first appearance in this series because if you haven't been watching, Bergeron's not playing. And it looks as though he tweaked something in Game 82 when Bru- the Bruins were playing the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the story is that Patrice Bergeron wanted to play in front of his dad in Montreal one more time. His father is battling cancer, and unfortunately, life happens. And Jim Montgomery is saying, wouldn't change a thing about how we did it. It's if, <laughs> if, if Bergeron comes back and is 50% of Patrice Bergeron. They win. They win. You, you don't uh, – no, you – I know uh, the best laid plans, et cetera, et cetera. And there are certain players you you just simply do not override. Um, Vasilevsky's one of them. Yeah. Um, and they've, you know, but they wait, they've earned that. Ex- yes. It's not something that's given. Hey, Andre, I think I'm going to pull you. I think you're going to go fuck yourself. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And then he plays the third period. Yep. Um, same with Bergeron. He wants to play game 82. He plays game 82. And you can't go through life assuming a guy's going to get hurt. Well, no. I mean... Especially in Game 82. Especially Unless in game you're 82. Steve's mother. <laughs> yeah, she assumes I'm going to get hurt every day. Like, I have to call it. It's, it's fine. Okay, good. Love you. Like, it's, then you can't go through life yeah. assuming that your little boy will get hurt. <laughs> she, 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 she's, she's nervously, like, vibrating watching the show going, Yes, you can! But there's part there's that, you know, and that's why... Right. I, I can always tell when I'm talking to Steve or I'm talking to Steve's mom. Through Steve. Oh, through Steve. Yeah, and yeah. and usually it's when there's snow uh, snow coming. 
and he's got to drive. We're going to text them, like, guys, it's snow today. Snowing. They're like, yeah, well, it's January. <laughs> it does that here. <laughs> Am I talking to Steve or how Steve was raised? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, I don't know. Those Zoom episodes, I don't remember them being so bad. Maybe maybe we try the one out today. Yeah, why don't we, why don't we just keep Steve is... in a nice bubble wrap? Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Steve, you seem to be chock full of irrational fears today. <laughs> and and also, Catholic you, guilt. Yeah, and also you smell... What was that pesto? You have pesto yesterday? You were at your parents' house yesterday, <laughs> weren't you? That's very funny. Big shout out to Tina, who listens to every episode of this show. Clementine. Bless her. God bless, bless her. her. She uh, um, can only imagine what she thinks of us, to be honest. I, I know. <laughs> Like this is she's got to think she at low opinion. I don't she know why. You're lovely. I, I know, hope so. At this she point, uh, my, there's a reason my parents don't listen. They don't need to be more disappointed. We've done a lot of manscaped ads well, for I anybody mean, to respect us. She just, you know, gives me the look and says, "Oh, did Adam need to post his vasectomy picture on?" Right. Instagram? Oh, my mom didn't like that either. You, well, I, it's weird that. Yeah, she's like, I think you should take that down. That was the only time she ever said that. I'm like, why? Just might as well come out with it. Uh, she told me she's like, uh, you know, I've never, I never knew her to be an enormous sports fan, but yeah. it, it, her and my dad uh, watch uh, my streams, um, even though Adam doesn't. And I uh, fucking now, watch your streams. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't think they watched Ice Serving either, but uh, they, they watched. Uh, Boy, they the, missed out. the streams, but I've never known them to be huge sports fans. And my mom was like, I. Uh, listen to and click like on everything you upload of Noxie and Cax. Oh, oh wow! And I was like, oh, I never knew you to be like a huge women's hockey uh, fan. And she's like, no, gotta support the girls. <laughs> love that. <laughs> gotta support. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Shout out Tina. That's amazing. It's also just a great show. It is a great show. It is a great show. I hope, and and I I don't actually know any of this because they don't say anything to us. But I really hope that PWHPA. Uh, league launches in the fall that they've been teasing and this is supposed to be the fall that they're going to do it i am mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sincerely hoping because what i want for that for those guys is like um you know then you got two leagues you can cover right no, two want, sets of games you can cover like that's sweet i want pwhpafr there you go <laughs> after every game every game get at it a longer and you know game over pwhpa it flows right <laughs> off the tongue um, pwhpafr uh carolina Wins in overtime. You know, the most shocking part about Carolina being up 2-0 is that the Islanders were able to score three goals in one game. Right? Uh, that is crazy. And and again, everybody was like, if I'm going to pick an upset, it's going to be the Islanders over Carolina. Carolina's showing everybody why they're Carolina. It's a long series, but this is... I, I said it. This is how the Islanders win and lose games. You could sweep them, and it's still not going to be an easy out. I think sweeps against the Islanders are eight games long. Oh, it, it, it's going to be a brutal series. I'm if I'm not if Sportsnet's um, website isn't off. Am I seeing this right? The Islanders got no power plays. Really? That that to me seems. I'm I'm just going to check the uh, box score again. But uh, it the, the the other so. stat that stands out to me here is Carolina outshot the Islanders thirty six twenty six. Islanders out hit Carolina 54-28. They do make it painful. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's easier for them because they don't have the puck. The most important thing about that no penalties thing is the Islanders were robbed. Like, I don't think there's any two ways about it. Eh. They should have had a power play at the end of the game. It was um, uh, Jordan Martin who caught uh, Scott Mayfield. I had to double check the names. With a high stick at the end of the game. And the linesman is right in front of them. The linesman can't call penalties. He lo he looks at the official. He's, he's looking at the fucking high stick, and they don't call it, and the referee's, uh, the official is behind him, and a lot of people were saying, like, oh, maybe the linesman accidentally was shielding the high stick from the guy, but go tell him. Like, there's a penalty that is going to affect the outcome of this game. I don't know if the Islanders score. We can't make up a, an alternate universe where we get right. to play with the but power play. But they should have at least had a chance. Should have had a power play. They got yeah. they got fucked over. Did you see the back and forth between Mike Rupp and Mike Johnson? I saw Mike Rupp's little uh, breakdown video where he's saying that um, he, the high stick was caused by um, Martin Nook, who, who, no, would have been uh, Mayfield. Mayfield high sticks himself through Martin Nick's stick because he, he brings up That's the stick. That's not a thing. That's not how that works. It's um, This happened Which is with, what Mike Johnson said. With, yes. So this happened with Stamkos and Kerfoot. Do you remember? Headman and Kerfoot. Sorry, Headman and Kerfoot. 
um, Kerfoot high or Headman high sticks Kerfoot by or with he stick lifted Kerfoot's stick into his own face. It's so, I it's think so is confused. what happened. He did it to himself basically, and yeah. it's a penalty. It's a penalty on Kerfoot because you are. It, it's just it's the unfortunate way the rules are written. You are in charge of your stick. I will say that rule sucks ass and probably shouldn't be. Like, okay, yeah, you got to be responsible for your stick. How about yeah? But then you got to judge intent really exactly. Then you so gotta, that's the lesser of two evils. That's why they've put it in the rule book. Maybe. It's blanket. If you, if your stick hits somebody in the face, it's a high stick. Whether or not that guy stick lifted you and then you hit him in the face, it's just the rule. So yeah. Mike Johnson, I thought that back and forth was was excellent. Like he was he was right about that, mm-hmm. and it should have been a power play to the Islanders. And like Islanders fans have a hundred percent right to be pissed about this game. I agree. You lose an OT after you should have a power play? That's that's fucking annoying. So here's what I'm excited about. Now we're back on the island. Oh, say your prayers. Yeah, now we're in UBS. Oh, man. I'm ready. I'm ready. Cannot wait. The Islanders are in. They've been in this series the whole way. Let's go. I'm not busy. (laughs) Let's go. Yeah. What have you got to do? (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) I think, you know, I think uh, uh, UBS is going to be rocking. I think they, they easily win one. This could be two all by the end of this. Oh, and it's not because Carolina is not good. It's because the Islanders are that close. They're built for the playoffs. Sorokin's going to stand on his head. I, I don't, I don't know. I have this, I know they finished like what? Seventh in the, in the conference or whatever it was, you know, yes. first among wild cards. Yeah. But I got to say, I, I believe in this Islanders team. Oh, I it's, do. It's a knife fight. It's a knife fight with yeah. them, whether they're first or last. Absolutely. Uh, what else do we have here? What else? What other? Oh, that's right. The Kings and Oilers. Oh. Edmonton comes roaring back. And this is this is the Edmonton Oilers we were expecting. Still no goals from Connor McDavid, though. They've shut him down. We mentioned it earlier. Philip Deneau and uh, Anze Kopitar. Now, when I was... When I hear from Montreal fa- or Edmonton Oilers fans about Phil Deneau... No, I'm kidding. Now <laughs> you're seeing the power of Phil Deneau, though. And Anze Kopitar is still Anze Kopitar, even yes. at 35. Did you see producer Drew do his favorite thing? What did he do? Troll Montreal fans? Poke the bear. Uh, which which bear what did he, he poke this time? So, Hurricanes, he tweeted this. Hurricanes and Kings seem to be the only teams with an officiating edge in the playoffs. Here's penalties taken per series, excluding fights and misconducts, which, yeah. So, Carolina, five to the Islanders, eight which is actually kind of interesting given the conversation we just had. Florida, 8, Boston, 7. Dallas and Minnesota, 12 apiece. I'm skipping over one. Rangers and Devils, 11 apiece. Tampa, Toronto, 11-10 for Tampa. Vegas, Winnipeg is 10-9 for Winnipeg. Colorado, Seattle is 7-6 for Colorado. Edmonton has taken 11. The Kings have taken 5. Huge! Disadvantage for the Oilers. Wow. Huge. So we all know these things tend to even out, Mm -hmm. but we're going to LA. Mm -hmm. If the correction comes, it's advantage Oilers. If it doesn't, it's advantage Kings. Kings took home ice advantage away from Edmonton, even though Edmonton tied the series up. I told you this, this to me is the series with the thinnest margin. And uh, the penalty calls in this entire game were five. There was no penalty calls in the third period at all. Four of them were Oilers. I want to see that Cam Sharon graph, but by period. Mm. Oh, that can he do that? Can we ask? Can we put in a request? Sure he Cam? could, and take out fights and misconducts, because then the third period is going to be by far like the most penalized period. Absolutely, it it disappears. It disappears in the regular season. It disappears hard in the playoffs. Like, if you, you got to put some parameters around it. Sure. So the team is within, I don't know, four goals, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? Uh, No fights, no misconducts. They disappear, man. If you didn't get one before the third period, odds are you're not getting one. Yep. I don't know. Adam. What? What is it? I I thought it was kind of odd when you said, oh, Edmonton Oilers come roaring back in the series when. The game was 2 nothing for Edmonton. Yes. And they blew a two-goal lead once again. Which is not rare in the NHL anymore. It's not. But it's also a lot of positivity to take away for these LA Kings going back to LA. Mm-hmm. They were in that game 
the Edmonton Oilers clearly can't hold on to a lead that whole that that well uh, mm-hmm. based on games one and two. And there's a lot of opportunity if the Kings can, I don't know, steal a couple here. It's maybe the, knock off the Edmonton Oilers. It's the Oilers' problem that they've had all season long that mm-hmm. I thought they had fixed. It's it's a concern, and it's going to be a bigger concern in L.A. The inevitable is everybody keeps saying Connor McDavid's got to get it going eventually. I don't he's, know. He's going to. He's gonna. You say that, and then we're two games in. You say that, and then we're three games in. He's going to score. We'll see. He's got, I mean, listen, Kopitar and Deneau, he is going to face, if, if they can get through this series, that's the toughest test he's going to face defensively. I don't see another team in the Western Conference that's got two better defensive centers than the LA Kings. Like I, I th- only thing I would say is there are like I want to see him go head to head with like uh, Kale McCarr handled him very well. Yeah, but Kale's not playing. Kale's not playing right now, and obviously they're not going head to head. But like a Haskinen, right? Sure. So it becomes but who's more got the defenseman's two job. Better defensive centers than right. than and Dino scored. A lot of this is on Jay Woodcroft as well because he has more weapons than he's ever had. Uh, Get Connor away from from their from those guys if mm-hmm. you can, and also uh, switch up the lines. Well, separate him and Drysaddle. But Drysaddle's been doing together. great. Yeah, and like, Evander Kane's got a couple. Put and him with Hyman. Put him without Hyman. Put him with Kane. Put him without Kane. Do do what you got to do. Interesting. Camel Car played twenty four minutes last night. Oh wait. Play? Oh, I thought he wasn't playing. Oh, shit. My bad. <laughs> well, no. Sorry. Like he's not in this. Series, yeah, no, I I met he no, was yeah. I didn't know he was playing for the. <laughs> oh, you meant he was. You, you know, I go to bed early, so I didn't realize he was back. <laughs> oh. That's my bad. No, oh, well, yeah. I mean, uh, it's not like I watched the Avalanche game. I was getting updates from Drew while I was shooting the. Yeah, block. you should. You can't get away from Avalanche thing. updates now. <laughs> no, no, no. Hell no! And I'll be like, oh yeah, sorry, I'm sending this late. He's like, oh, I'm watching the Avalanche game. I don't fucking care. Yeah, like I I actually think it kind of works to our advantage that the Leafs and Avs play on the same night. <laughs> uh, Rob Rossi. Uh, taking us away from the playoffs for a minute, uh, ta- wrote a whole article for The Athletic on w- why would Kyle Dubas choose to go to Pittsburgh after the season's over? Because they're talking about the managerial situation. Dubas is a guy that their Fenway Sports Group is clearly interested in. And I won't read you the whole damn thing, but Fenway Sports Group includes a portfolio that's got the Red Sox, Liverpool FC, R- and RFK Racing. And Dubas apparently is a big time, he sees soccer and hockey as different sides of the same coin. Uh, and he said, is said to cherish the opportunity to learn from leagues outside of the NHL. And and Rossi makes sure to point out that, listen, he built the Leafs as they are right now. Why would he want to leave that? So he's trying to find other reasons why you would want to leave that. Isn't that every GM ever? I mean, it, but it's the autonomy, right? The vacancy at president. Yeah. But, you know, I said this about Dubas becoming GM. And like, I really, I feel like he's settled into the role now, but it took some time. And what I wondered is if he should have been assistant GM for a little longer. And I look at him getting more responsibility and going. He was gonna. He, he became, was gonna get a job. Somebody he was, was gonna, gonna get, get a job, but it, like you just got your footing as GM. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to go some, if you want to be a GM somewhere else, fine. That's what you want. I can't. You can't help what you want. But to get a a, a higher role than that. I mean, if it's more money, more power. Does this conversation it's, it's, change if they lose this first round? Because like, remember, we're talking about this. If I brought this conversation up after game one, what's your reaction to it, guys? Oh, fuck. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? No, 100%. Um, yeah, he doesn't get enough credit. I mean, we, we're fans. We look at wins and losses. Yeah. But the analytic staff that he's set up, the sports science set. And the way they interpret up, analytics, I think, is important, too. Which I think is... A, they, it's changing. They do it very cleverly, and it's changing, and the goalposts are always moving. He's he's set the team up for success in every way he fathomably can. It's just a matter of will they fucking win or not. I, I think he's a guy who can put a lot of systems in place. Um, I'm curious to know what kind of budget... He'll get in Pittsburgh. I imagine the, Fen- <laughs> the Fenway Sports Group is a little different from the group that almost lost their team to Hamilton. You're, yes. uh, you, uh, you jumped very quickly to Dubas is already there and what kind of budget he's got. Oh, he's going to get a big that, fat budget. I don't for like sure. that. Did you miss the Tina conversation? <laughs> <laughs> I, it, I, it's so unacceptable if the, if the MLSE loses Kyle Dubas. Yeah. Like, yep. He's one of the best GMs they've had in history. 
He's doing Certainly. such a great job. This team is phenomenal. Probably one of the best records they've ever had. My yeah, feelings yeah. are going to change aggressively based on did they win last night. <laughs> It shouldn't. Yes, I think I, think I know, but, I'm, but that's not his job to make that decision. <laughs> right. Made of flesh and bone. Kyle Dubas has help done it. enough in his tenure to earn a is, new contract. Is Shanahan ready to step aside as president? And it doesn't mean he doesn't work for the team. It just means he's like CEO. Can he get a higher role, like cause, emperor? Because here's the, well, he might as well be. But I'm, I'm thinking this, just thinking this from a practical perspective. If you're a Fenway Sports Group, you're like, if you want to make a trade, you can make it. We don't care. We trust you completely. To do this. Well, yeah, because they got the president and GM spot open, so yeah. he can be both. Yeah, but every team gives you that option until you lose. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, actually, fuck off. And we have to have weekly meetings and this and that. And or until you sign a big contract that they don't like it, and it goes poorly. Yeah, yeah. hey, uh, we gave you autonomy, and this guy has 15 goals in 60 games. And... Um, Kiss her ass, actually, a little bit. And, <laughs> and you have to... He's making $80 million to score 15 goals. You're sure about that? Yeah. You're sure? Yeah. Then you lose some of that autonomy. You know? Who is this cur foot you've put with Sidney oh, Crosby? Oh, my God. I'm tired of watching him. Tired of watching him. $13 million for an A cur foot? Cool. Sidney <laughs> Crosby from A cur foot and J hole. Um, <laughs> Eric Engels had this to say about Pierre-Luc Dubois uh, in his mailbag for Sportsnet. Uh, because he said, if people are really wondering why the Canadians might want to trade for PLD based on who he is as a player... Uh, they haven't been watching him this season and they're unaware of how he has stepped up his game in the playoffs. He's been so good the Canadians might want to make a move for him once this season ends. Even if they think his chances are strong that he'll walk in unrestricted free agency a year later, they don't have to guarantee they don't have the guarantee of that and a lot can change in a year. He's a jet. He's he's a Canadian. He's a Canadian like But he's a Canadian. It's, it's like he's the a Habs Canadian. They have loaned him to the Jets. This is the most inevitable thing that's ever happened. It's, it's happening. It's so strange. I can't think of another situation like it. Like there are players who have tried to force their way to other teams and have failed, by the way. This is a magnetic pull. Yeah, this isn't a trade deadline thing either where it's a player with a no move clause who wants to go to a specific place. This is an RFA with as little agency as the league can afford a player. And he's a hab. Yep. Playing in Winnipeg. Yep. Yep. He, at some point, he should get a place closer to the Bell Center. Uh, <laughs> probably. Yeah, he might yeah. want to rent an apartment. Yeah. I. The last thing I want to say quickly, just in the news and notes from non-playoff teams, is Emily Castengay's name. She is the uh, uh, former agent of Alex uh, Lafreniere, now assistant GM in Vancouver. Her name came up as a potential Flyers general manager candidate. So she could be moving up very, very quickly within the NHL. Uh, interesting. I mean, listen, they're going to be looking at a whole bunch of people in Philadelphia, as they should. It could even be Danny Breer, who's the interim general, general manager. But it's going to be fascinating to see the difference between, because they've got an incoming president, because remember, the last guy just resigned, mm -hmm. who hired Breer, by the way. They've got Bill Barber, Bobby Clark, and Paul Holmgren, all former players who are supposed to be consultants, who are fighting for power together there. I don't know uh, I don't know who the next general manager of the Flyers is, but I know that whoever they are, they're going to have to be very good at managing complicated family dynamics. Well, and worth mentioning, like, Emily Castingay is at the center of the whole Rachel Dory thing. I think that's very, I think that's extremely unresolved. relevant. It's Ex currently unresolved. And obviously she's been on this show, but uh, it's relevant information. I certainly agree with that. Yeah. So I, it'll be interesting to see, but I just figured we'll bring that up because sometimes it's interesting to take a look outside of the playoffs. Sometimes. Should we do the press conference? Uh, sure. All right. Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Does kombucha have caffeine? I don't think so. No. It's just fermented like vegetables, isn't it? I don't know. I feel so healthy. It's maybe. probably not even real. I have an update on Yellow Shirt Guy, which would be the most um, unex uh, most obvious update you've ever heard. Oh. From my buddy that was oh. sitting uh, behind him. Okay. He was drunk. Uh, my buddy says, uh, you can also say on the pod that yellow shirt guy and his buddy were absolute grinders and maybe had 30 beers each before they got ejected. I'm by the shocked. Penalty box. Totally shocked by that. <laughs> Sorry. I said that jokingly. I didn't mean to blow that. Absolute Sorry, Jess. Grinders? Your buddy's a legend. So, uh, tell him, tell him from me. He's shout a legend. out, shout out Ton. 
Wow. Ton, no. Ton's a there. riot. <laughs> Ton's a good time. Uh, He's Jesse's wildest friend. The guy's wild. Oh, yeah. Out of I mean, control. The, the absolute grinder in himself. Who probably yeah, Ton own. probably fed them the beers. Probably he was probably having them too. Beers 30 order- beers is a mortgage payment. Yeah, and ordered them for him. Yeah, at Scotiabank. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> fucking yellow shirt guy. Uh, good for him. Let me, let, me, let me get to these. I mean, also, don't shake the glass. This is from... This <laughs> yeah. is Colin... Uh, how does billionaire Adam Wilde feel now that he has joined the rest of the peasants on Twitter with no blue check mark? Um, fine. You know, I'll be honest with you. The check mark didn't really get you anything. Um, no. It, it, under Jack or under Elon, it really didn't matter. Well, you, you got the check mark, and it's like, wow, now you have you have uh, your all your replies. You've got your reply replies, and then you've got notifications for people who are verified that tweeted at you. That's it. Hey, I'll, That's all yeah, I can I'll, I'll say it like a snob. So... I have a lot of friends in media mm-hmm. who also had a blue check mark. And under my mentions, it allowed me to sort by verified. And I would use that sometimes uh, because I get so many mentions that all miss tweets from people I know. Hmm. But I know a lot of people who were verified. So, you know, sometimes it's an easier see- way to see if your friends were tweeting you. Yeah, I would see a tweet. Like, I would miss a lot of your tweets. And right. then I would turn on verified and it'd be like, oh, there's Adam. And Jesse was always hanging around with the plebs. Yeah. Jesse, ne- yeah, you didn't have a blue check mark. Weird. Never have, never will. It's weird. Fuck you guys. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's fair. But yeah. like, that's fair. The the I, I a term that, that crept into the discourse that I always found amusing was legacy verified. Like I inherited the blue check mark through nepotism or, or something like that. Like, no, the company I work for went out and got all its like on air talent on air talent like faces uh blue check mark cuz they didn't want people to impersonate that's the whole point of verification the whole check point mark. of the yeah it's in the word to verify, verify. this is a public figure this is the that person. that that new york government agency thing was <laughs> fucking hilarious i've never seen it so there's a tweet from uh the new york uh governor's account like the city of new york's <laughs> account and they're like this is the official new york twitter account uh you can see that by link this is the link to our website where we confirm that this is the real account and the first reply with as many retweets and followers and everything is no this, this is, is the <laughs> real new york governor and, uh, and they all they've done is changed a couple a couple words in their handle yeah. and they have the exact same profile picture and you wouldn't be able to tell like mr click it mr yeah. Booth is gonna have a fucking field day. Like, you can you believe the damage that guy's gonna be able to do now? Oh my god! You're gonna get Booth hard. Oh, you know what? On second thought, uh, maybe this is great. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to this. On second thought, maybe this rules really fucking hard. No, uh, but um, Twitter's a mess right now. Like, yeah, with that I understand. Uh, I mean, oh, so we had Twitter Blue for on our- the SDPN account, yeah, because. Uh, so you could only post videos up to two tw- two minutes and twenty seconds unless you had um, Twitter Blue. So we had that yeah. a long time for so we could post longer video, long form videos. And we made the decision to get rid of it, yeah. not as an fu to Elon, but because uh, we are running a business and we're like, is this even worth it? And after well, civil th- debate, we came to no. Yeah, because it was With like people who have expertise in this field. The, literally, the question to that I had for Justin was like. Does this prevent us from doing what that account is there for, which is showing people what content is happening today on our channel, right? Does it help us promote with Twitter Blue? He's like, honestly, no. And I was like, okay, then let's get rid of it. And and here's it's interesting. I don't know how we got around this, but uh, uh, we are we were technically supposed to be uh, a gold check mark because we're an organization. And organizations have to pay $1,000 a month. No, we never applied for organization. No. I know, but they would have come. They're starting to come for that, though. No, they see you with a hunt down people? Yeah, they, they, they're they yeah. trying to find the people under the personal. What are you doing? What so, are you doing? Well, I mean, like, you look at the Leafs. The Leafs pay for it. Um, and you You're can the see Toronto Maple. You could see maybe why they would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Like, we don't fucking need that. Are you kidding me? No, and they can pay for all their individual players because it might be worth it to an organization that large. Yeah. You don't want someone going, hey, I'm John Tavares. Donate to the John Tavares Foundation. Right. And then you flood money into this organization, I, I, and it's just some dude. I, I have a theory, and we were talking about it before the show, and I think what makes me feel good about the theory is Jesse agrees. 
is I, I don't agree. I don't know what you're talking about. I I said that I think that this is just <laughs> I think this is just his way of just tanking the website because he wants to get rid of it. I think he wants to tank it. He's and now using you, so much money to be an advertiser. You now have to subscribe to Twitter Blue or Twitter organizations. Yeah. So if if you want to even advertise on the platform, you have to pay just to be on it. And so I gotta pay to buy something from you. What are you, Costco? Exactly. And Le- LeBron and Stephen King both said they were not going to keep their their blue check marks. And Elon left it to them as like a way of trolling them. So they don't pay, but they still have blue yeah. check marks. And it, what he said to uh, uh, Stephen King was Namaste. Like, oh, I'm doing such a kind act for you. I'm sorry. You don't get to be a belligerent asshole to absolutely everybody you encounter and then pretend to be cool. You, sorry. Well, that's man. why he's doing it. He's trolling them because yeah. they don't like him. Yeah, I he's, think he's, he's I, fucking with them. No, I think it really bothers him that people don't like him. Well, that's why I think he wants the website gone, right? It's the only place. Think about it as a billionaire. Your entire circle. Only you can do that. Well, okay. My entire circle (laughs) is on my payroll, including my family. Everybody is relying on my money to support them. Maryland. So at a certain point, yeah, sorry, Maryland. Uh, At a certain point, you get so rich that like you don't have anybody around you who can criticize you without fear of losing the income stream. Mm -hmm. So Twitter is the only place where these guys actually get it in their face. And and if Elon were intelligent in this in this era, and I'm not saying that he's not smart in other areas, I think a lot of geniuses through history have been absolutely horrible people. Uh uh they have. Look up Tom, Thomas Edison. Uh but but uh a Bruins with, fan. With yeah, definitely that fucker. No, he's a terrible Thomas Edison's a terrible person. Yeah, terrible, Bruins fan. But created the light bulb. So um but with with this guy, I think this is the only place where he gets criticism legitimate or not leveled his way at all ever yeah. so it's jarring for him when he goes online and sees people saying stuff about him he's like this can't be true none of my friends say this yeah. who i pay you did say that before the show and i did agree with that thank you jesse that's, yes no i, I think that's, that. i think it's a very good point you know was this the emperor's new clothes or whatever well I, like, being a billionaire i can relate to it the only place i i i get it is twitter or youtube yeah you know my bill. I'm, I'm a billionaire. You guys give it to me. <laughs> We're very kind to Adam. Rich Alley. as hell. I don't know what you're talking. Rich about. AF. Wild. Uh, yeah. I don't want it. I don't need it. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're curious about uh, which one is mine, it's the one with over two hundred thousand followers. Oh, but Not you can buy followers. Oh well, then I'm going to start a Steve Dangle fake account. Well, then nothing matters. And then when nothing matters, and like if that's going to gum up the works for me, then it's not going to be worth it for me to be on there. And then I'm going to abandon the platform, and others are going to abandon the platform, and then it'll just be a fucking ghost town that you sunk billions of dollars into. If you What's are, the what, business are we, what are we doing next? We, we all going, uh, where are we going? Well, everybody was like Mastodon, and I looked at it and I was like, this looks like shit. No one's using this. Something's going to happen. Somebody, somebody smart who is, wants to make a lot of money is going to come up with a platform that's eerily similar. And uh, just uh, people will go over, and then it'll Twitter, get Twitter question mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tweet, tweet, tweeter parody Twitter. Um, and what'll happen is it'll get politicized. You'll have parody. one one group of people on one, and on the one left. group of people on the other. The, the left right. is all beware. Uh, the right. right is all be on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? That's, 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 left the, left. that's, that's the, the left and right. Part. Yelling at each other. Yeah, you know, and and Ron DeSantis is going to get in a cage match with AOC on Monday Night Raw. Coming to America. And you know what would be hilarious? It'll be like Twitter versus whatever this new app is. And there'll be, will like, people on the new app will be subtweeting about people on Twitter. But they won't be able to read it because they're not on it. (laughs) I I was just, I was was imagining, I was imagining a wrestling promo from Ron DeSantis and. If you're not a coward, get your ass down to this ring right now, Mickey Mouse. I want a big piece of you. He wants to get into a fist fight with Mickey Mouse. Yeah, well, with Disney for sure. And then Goofy comes and hits him with a steel chair. It's a little bit funny, you know. We'll fucking do it again. As a governor, uh, it's a little bit funny that he's going after the biggest corporation in his state. That's usually rare. How do you make absurdist comedy? I don't know. Anymore. Let's not get into this. No. Yeah. <laughs> What's the next question, Jess? Sorry for for that whole road. We wow. Oh, you're about the All blue right. Let's mark. let's end the show. It's now a political statement, by the way. These blue check marks, too, which I think is bizarre. If people choose to yeah. pay for Twitter, so be it. No, I don't think it I, says anything about their political persuasion. No. Right? Let the some people find it useful. Sure. And yeah. let them use tools that you find useful. <laughs> uh, don't I don't find, find it, useful. it useful, so I won't. Jesse, yeah, it's not a political statement. Um, this is from Glenn C81. We can end it on this. He's asking for a favor from you, Stephen Dangle, Glenn. 
Um, with the New Jersey Devils, down 2-0 in the series against the New York Rangers. Can Steve Dangle give a pep talk to the Rangers fans in Ken Danico's voice? To Rangers fans? Oh, sorry, to Devils fans. No, I hope oh, not. I was, <laughs> you're winning. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Ken Danico Devils pep talk. Let's go. On how to get back into the series. Now listen, Devils Nation, I think there's a misconception about the New Jersey Devils that I played for. My name is Ken Danico of the New Jersey Devils. I think the misconception is that when we won those Stanley Cups, it was easy. I can assure you they were all long series. They were all long playoff runs. You gotta grit. You gotta grind. You gotta want it more than the other guys. If you're gonna get it, you got to want it more than the other guys. You got to do the right things. You got to do all the right things. And then the Stanley Cup will be yours. Or my name is Den- Ken Danico. Brought to you by the New Jersey <laughs> State Lottery. Is. Remember, anything can happen in Jersey. Wow. Wow. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.